Hi, Internet. Welcome to this show. Uh, it's a little bittersweet of a show, I think I could say. And Katie and Celeste are in the wrong spots, but we're going to fix that. Woo! I feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be right now. <laughs> That's fair. Question one, how does it feel to be Celeste? Um, Apparently you smell really great, powerful, so I've heard. But I stressed out. Accurate. <laughs> yeah, powerful but stressed out. That's, that's, a, that's a very right on the nose there. <laughs> the strange feeling to just push my hands down and yeah, sort in, of, in a goblin. In a goblin-like fashion. Yeah. <laughs> um... Anyway, hi, Internet. So uh, I'll get some of the logistical stuff out of the way up front, and then we'll get to the meat and potatoes of this stream. So first of all, we do have two lovely sponsors in Initiative Coffee Company. There's a link in the chat if you'd like to pick some up for yourself and get a couple bucks off. You're more than willing, or more than able to do so, I should say. If you're willing, that's even better. Um, <laughs> and then Elderwood Academy provides us with awesome gaming gear. Um, and you can use that to, if you decide to purchase something from them, we get a percentage of that. Thank you, Renee. Um, and lots of cool stuff. Did a couple videos recently showcasing their, uh, um, their mini spell books, which are super cool. Uh, and those will be coming to Kickstarter soon. Um, so that is pretty much it for logistical things, basically, up front. If you don't know... Uh, about all the Eberron stuff that's happening. I have multiple videos out already covering that. If you're completely in the dark in the D&D world, um, go and check those videos out. So we didn't have Celeste prepare a recap uh, for this because we're kind of just going to talk about it, I think, as we kind of go through this. I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm peeking a little bit, so I turn that down a little bit. Um, so... Well, thank you. Subscription right off the bat. What a great day. Thank you, Double Brook, for that sub. <laughs> um, so what are we doing uh, and going over tonight? So if uh, let's start here. First of all, we didn't plan on ending the campaign last session. That wasn't part of the plan. But sometimes you just got to know uh, oh, the charges. I'm sorry. I'll change the charges. <laughs> What's fun is I forgot my actual username login, so know, we're the I Venture Maidens tonight. <laughs> I see that, yeah. Um, I'm waiting for the email that tells me how to reset. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, anyway, as... Oop, that's too much. As I was saying, uh, it just worked out perfectly. The way things sort of ended... Oh my god, Zoned Out Bane, another subscription. You guys... Those Twitch Prime subs, I have a feeling it's time for that monthly circuit to come back around again. That's typically how that works. <laughs> um, but anyway, like I was saying, um, it just felt right. I wish I had made the call on the stream, uh, but we basically, as soon as the stream ended, we're like, man, that was just too perfect. Let's end it there. So if you missed it, basically coming down from the high of beating Tiamat and, and stopping the Cult of the Dragon, saving the world, the Belladonnas had sort of split into two camps, party camp and severe drama ruined the party camp, I'm going to call it. Um, and that would be uh, Rid and Leo in the party camp and Roswin and Odella in the let's talk about some serious drama patron craziness camp. Went for this for a while. Everybody was brought together. Things were revealed. I have a lich eye in my head. My patron is maybe evil. We don't know. All of this. And then the wonder that is Muffin tipped the reliquary. And that caused a donation. Or a, a, a thing to happen, rather. And a champion. Yeah, and it was the first good one, I think, the Belladonnas have ever gotten. Uh, and it was, they got an immortal god of all dogs, a dog that can never die, uh, that grows old with the party, and when they pass on, it it ages with them, and then it de-ages to find a new owner and continue that cycle of love as only the truest good boy can, or good girl, in this case. Uh, and it, 
if that's not the Belladonna's, I don't know what is. So we said, there's still a lot to be unpacked, a lot of story beats and things that we would have loved to explore. And we were going to try to condense it into this episode or maybe a few more cobbled together if we could find them. But that that just doesn't make sense. It didn't feel right. So we said, bookend the Belladonna's like we started the Belladonna's with a bunch of pets with one ultimate super god of pets. And let's call that a wrap. 60 something episodes total for the whole tyranny of dragons storyline it's like now there's this there's definitely an art piece in here somewhere where like we're all huddled around this puppy and then you see all of our other pets in the background also looking on yeah, <laughs> yeah. like yeah <laughs> my three kid. mounts that i never got to use yeah <laughs> i think i used harley my horse once <laughs> Crazy eyes. And... All the time for writing and emotional support. Yeah, unfortunately, Crazy Eyes and Midnight did get a whole lot of usage, but they were there just in case. <laughs> they were. Um, so, what I, I guess before we dive into the Q and A section, if you have questions, either start thinking them up or um, you know start typing them out in the chat and we'll start to grab them and answer the questions as we go. Um, and uh, what we're going to end up doing is going forward, uh, we're going to do one shots, if you will, to kind of wrap up the story beats. And I have to count the exact amount, but it's like six or seven uh, out there now to finish out all the story pieces with, oh, I came up with names for all of them already things that are going to be like dealing with this mission they were given right before the end of the campaign or dealing with Odella's patron dealing with the red dragon from Roswin's past and rescuing, you know, Leo's dwarf dad and all this kind of stuff. Cool backstory or finishing tying up loose ends as one shots in the future. And it'll be, they'll be, you know, whenever we can get time for all of us to sit down and play that. So the Belladonnas aren't gone. Their story will still continue. Um, so think about this with every show you've ever wanted to have that conclusion that you never got because it ended early or it ended poorly or the writers didn't care anymore and they just sort of were like, nah, everybody lives and everything's fine. Dragon flies away. It's every, it's whatever. Um, so what show are you talking about? I don't know. I have... Really I, just, no, no, I know, right? That's crazy. <laughs> um, God. Uh, um, so we're going to finish the story over time. We actually did schedule the first one. We will tell you this now. Mark your calendars. October 19th. That is a Saturday. It's going to be a longer than normal episode. A Saturday evening. I run about four hours and we're going to play through one of the storylines. I feel like Odella's patron is kind of lined up to be the one first, but we'll talk about it behind the scenes and figure out what it's going to be. But mark your calendars, a couple months from today, uh, we will be continuing the Belladonna story. And then when we figure out what the next one is, we'll let you know. Um, so, that's that. I think it's time to start fielding uh, questions in the chat here. So I'm going to come back to yours, Zoned Out Bane, because I think I have to go get my son more milk. So I will let uh, <laughs> the ladies answer uh <laughs> The next question in the chat from Cardinals <laughs> and Caverns. I will be right back. Uh, yes, so Cardinals away. and Caverns uh, asked to all, how are you all such queens? Is it stressful dealing with that pressure every day? Uh, let's go around the let's go around the horn here. Anybody feel <laughs> they want to really open it off with that question? This excellent question. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, for me, uh, it's not too much pressure. I was pretty much born a queen. Um, you know, did start out princess, but graduated. Um, so maybe to someone else, it could be stressful. But for me, you know, it's everyday life. And all you got to do is uh, put on mascara, buy a bunch of dice and get in there. <laughs> for my queen I have life. so much respect for that, Katie. <laughs> as for me, I didn't know that I wanted to be a queen until I graduated uh, preschool and they asked me what I wanted to be when I grow up. 
Uh, I feel like I have accomplished that fairly well. Sometimes it is uh, through drama. Sometimes it is through trauma. Uh, but here we are. And I feel regal every day. Uh, I think part of that is that I am surrounded by other royals, basically, <laughs> every day. And that's a pretty good feeling. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Katie got her crown. Hell yeah. <laughs> damn it where <laughs> i know i have one somewhere but it's very deep in this apartment i do not <laughs> moving yeah. no crowns to be found anywhere nearby so oh shit hang on y'all aren't living life right also thank you <laughs> you have an oscar yes also thank you <laughs> thank you uh, I'm not a queen. I'm an empress, so that makes oh. me better than everybody. I, I got, I got the dragon dagger. That's not a crown, but I could try. That's to put pretty it. sweet. Does it actually play? Oh, oh god! Man. Yeah, it does all of the, all of the things. <laughs> it does it all. <laughs> it wow. plays the theme song. I could be like. Beautiful, Celeste. That's awesome. I was at the Ren Fair just a, just a week hence. A ten day passed, and I bought this. And it matched my outfit. Uh, so how long have I been a queen, darling? Well, it, it all started probably in high school when I decided I was going to be in the drama club, and the rest is silence. That's a line from Hamlet by the way um <laughs> the end line um <laughs> yeah but no i was a super awkward weird kid until i found both dungeons and dragons and theater in high school and that just uh allowed me to ascend to my true queen form and um yeah that's that's basically it and it is it is incredibly stressful um but in the best way <laughs> oh yeah is it stressful yes also agreed celeste said that perfectly i'm gonna just <laughs> put my chip on her answer <laughs> <laughs> um so i will jump back to cardinals and caverns question and celeste you answered it uh, i'm sorry zoned out bane's question um so the next monday session we're not gonna have the belladonnas will be like we said kind of quarterly ish where we can fit it in uh, if we can get it to work out that we could do it all at like say gen con next year that would be awesome as like an actual thing no promises on that we'll try and make it work um but as for what's going to continue on the channel monday nothing next week because my son will be born at eight o'clock in the morning so i'm not going to be streaming that whole week uh, i'm going to be busy dealing with a new baby um so that'll be that uh but the following monday i i honestly don't know I still would like to put something uh, on the channel uh, Monday, whether it's just like me hanging out, chatting with you guys, doing whatever. Let's build a map. Let's build an encounter. Let's go through some of the homebrew on D&D Beyond and see how bad it is or good. Um, or if we really want to have fun, let's do the D&D wiki because, oh boy, there's a lot to go through there. Um, or, you know, maybe I'll just stream some video games. Well, maybe we'll play Neverwinter. It's still D&D themed. Uh, um, but I would like to put something back in that time slot. Maybe Descended to Avernus or something else when one of the new campaigns comes out. Maybe I can rally some people together to do Dragon of Ice Spire Peak to get that on the channel. Uh, if I can fit <laughs> Celeste's eyes real wide on that one. Um, it's really good. I've been it, playing through it. So we'll see. Something will happen in that time slot. Yes, thank you for the shout outs for being a dad. It's uh we'll see if the second time's easier or worse than the first time. Uh we'll see how that goes. I'll let you guys know. Don't worry. Um, okay, so let's see. The next question I think was ah, who do you feel is the true leader of the Belladonnas? Oh. Chat, what do you think is the true leader of the Belladonnas? <laughs> Uh, I think it really depends on the time period. Yeah. So, what? Who do you think was the first leader of the Belladonnas? Like, let's say pre Rise of Tiamat. Who is the Who is the leader of the I Belladonnas? I mean, Roswin came up with the name. I came up with the name, but I think that Lux was really the leader at the time. We all kind of stood behind Lux's decisions on stuff. She was noble as fuck. That moral compass is due north. 
shit. Yeah, and Ava was not not leader material. <laughs> she also wasn't around for that long. <laughs> yeah, In the she grand... was around for like seven episodes or whatever. Yeah, seven out of thirty. You know. And then nobody trusted Odella, and so she just kind of like <laughs> hung out for a while. It's like she was full of secrets and couldn't be trusted. <laughs> she was not. <laughs> Okay, and then and then what about the the window of time where it was uh uh rise of team at until Rid joined the party? Who do you think yes. was the leader? Um, who do you think was the leader, Celeste? Uh, <laughs> leader. <laughs> I, I think mean, that that we we are like um in the Narnia books, we were like all together leaders filling in where it was needed. Um, we okay. had we had wisdom. It's a from, very diplomatic answer. Yeah, <laughs> Roslyn, we, had, we had the face of Leo. Mm -hmm. we, had, uh, we had Red who was pulling us all together in every way that was needed. Like she was the glue ready with whatever personality and then we had odella who was like let's have a fucking business <laughs> strong business decisions yeah. Yeah. can i add my objective opinion having yes absolutely yeah yeah i i think uh roswin was the leader leo thought he was the leader <laughs> and odella was the treasurer <laughs> <laughs> Hundred percent. I uh, uh, like, yeah. Let's go for this ride for sure, and <laughs> to Roz for pretty much everything that she did. Uh, <laughs> okay, might, yeah, there right. might be more to that, but you know. No, uh, I think that's a pretty good one for sure. Yeah. Uh, that being said, if Roswin would have walked into a room of the most powerful people in Faerun and tried to uh, sell the party, it might not have gone mm. that well. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing, yeah, Bard's, I mean, Leo's a hype man, right? So he's like, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, like, and he's also so very emotionally unstable. I don't think he could have been like, like a, a real leader, so. But it was really cute, you know, how much energy he put into wanting to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that he wanted to be he genuinely thought he was right yeah yeah, yeah. all right next question how has twitch streaming changed for all of you since you all started doing it how does it change how you play hmm. so let's start here right so how have everybody here i think has started play had played D D before like it wasn't like playing D, D and streaming at the same time we've all played D, D first and then streaming was like an, it came after right that's the case for everybody yeah okay so there was a definite it was like i played D, D for fun or with friends and then like streaming is now a part of it because i do have we do and i'm sure a lot of us know people who like they started streaming D, D like when they started playing it so like that's always that's what they know they don't know the the separation um yeah. but yeah how has it changed uh, uh so twitch streaming is was great because it was consistent because mm. usually somebody had a channel and they wanted to do it on a certain time or a certain you know like so it wasn't the whole thing and then i think people feel more obligated to show up i don't know if that's always the case but at least i did where i'm like i don't want to leave my house but i'm like i don't have to leave my house for this so i really don't <laughs> have many excuses to not show up for it <laughs> for sure. uh, but yeah I, i'm i don't think it changed how i played at all um i did i think i what i did try to bring in more like story elements when i played because I had a DM who actually let me do story elements. I've talked before about how my other DM is just awful. <laughs> <laughs> so tired. Why are you still playing? <laughs> That's this, why the only whole... time I get to play Ava. And so oh, <laughs> I stick with it. There you go. But it gets rough sometimes. So I think that's probably, it was, it's, a, it's a different, it's a nice change of pace, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think for me, the story aspect for sure, because it's not only just like you're playing, 
and you want to have fun, but also you have to, you know, it's more of an entertainment standpoint mm. as well. Sure. So like, I would never stream with a character who I was just like, man, I really want to play that class only, you know, and sure. not care about them. Uh, because I think that it's a lot better when you can deliver actual emotion because you're invested in their story. Um, but yeah, and I think that too, it's interesting going back from playing on a stream game because at this point, you know, most of the people that I play with, like you have, there's like streaming um, courtesies, I guess, with mm. like not talking over each other and, you know, letting people have their moments and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, sometimes when you go and you play in person just for, you know, whatever, for fun, uh, people you know and half the time I do it too because I'm drunk and I'm playing D&D &D with my friends you know I'm not perfect by any means with it but it is a lot more courteous as you know, like almost like you're taking turns when you play on a stream. Celeste, Renee, anything to add? Yeah so this was my first long form streamed game mm -hmm. and uh, I remember when Ted first called me to talk about character stuff I like was in the middle of my living room was doing a happy dance because I got so excited about the character I got to create and play and perform and while I've done that before for podcasts I'm usually on the other side of it and so it was different than creating a character for a uh, in-person campaign because I knew this was one not only that I would I would stick with for a while, but that I really wanted to explore the personality of and do less like figuring out as I went along, kind of know going in who Rid was. And I loved the story that we came up with for Rid. I don't think we even got into all of it in this mm -hmm. game and that's okay um there's a much longer form story here where rid is around the belladonnas for longer and continues to earn their trust and trust them and share more of who they are but it was so exciting for me and i think this was like this stream started around the same time as my first long form stream on Scraticus Academy. I'd done a few like one shots over there, but never anything long form. And so I feel like I just kind of jumped in feet first. And I've learned how I want to build characters for streams from this because uh, there are some personality types for characters that are like not so great for streams or that are easier for me uh, when I, I'm feeling anxious as I learned when I created Rid and JD who's the other character who kind of like simultaneously in another stream was uh, uh, my other experience and so it's been really a joy to just learn about the process because it is it is different than an in-person game uh, there are so many similarities and so many joys that I get from it coming and playing with these folks every week but I've also learned a lot from the process. And so I'm really grateful to have been a part of the Belladonnas and explore how I create characters, how I role play and how things have changed over the past year. Yeah, it's been, it's, you've been here for a year. I've been here for a year. Yeah, a little more than a year, actually. What about you, Celeste? It's right about, actually, because we started like a little bit after. After Gen Con, yeah. After Gen Con last year. Uh, so I, yeah, I was playing d, d for a very long time before streaming and like this, uh, Venture Maidens was my first like starting to stream, but this was my first also long form campaign as a player in a stream. This is the longest I've ever been a player in a game at all. Period. Um, wow. Period. Wow. In all, in my whole life, um, which wow. is wild because usually I'm the, I'm the dungeon master. So uh so learning how to be a player in a stream was crazy um mm. because i also i i don't know i just feel like i take up a lot of attention and space and like as the dm you're always like okay like let the players go let them shine like whatever and having to confront like how do i be a character and like be effective and not steal the spotlight and like work with a team um that's but what i've had to learn leo then <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, right? And then I'm like, shit. Like, <laughs> right, but how do you do that effectively as your character in a way that's meaningful and not just like on a dick level? Um, so, yeah, learning how to 
moderate my time and like responses then also that balance of like because you only have a certain hour you know limit on your games which is nothing I was used to I used to play like you know we'd do Sunday like every other week we'd do like eight hour sure. game right yep. like we'd have like lunch in the middle of the day and hang out and like drink beers throughout the day and go outside take smoke breaks like do whatever um so learning how to compress the experience into a short amount of time was like wild uh for streaming i mean for venture maintenance i do it for an hour and a half um for this game you know it was three hours and then two hours and like finding how to make each session meaningful because you know mm -hmm. it only lasts so long um but i i feel like we 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 nailed it i think the belladonna started doing a lot like in in these sessions and like these arcs and like what we were going through so uh, i think we were really successfully learned how to do that and how to maximize our time um, so that's the biggest thing I've learned and what has had to change, um, how to manage <laughs> your time, uh, yeah. while streaming. And I, and I think, you know, from my perspective, how things have changed for me, um, as time has gone on and you can definitely see this if you watch, if you have a million hours to go watch Horde of the Dragon Queen from one through Rise of Tiamat through the end. Um, just like, I feel I've picked up and learned a lot over that time period just when i mean obviously rotating players right different personalities you pick up different things people play differently um but you know i used my experience having played rise of team and horde of the dragon queen to try to alter this game to make it more fun i think there were some spots that dragged on a little too long like the caravan but that's the nature it's supposed to do that which by the way i'm gonna throw this out there i don't know if you guys know this um, you know how Horde of the Dragon Queen is so brutal at the start? It's lethal. That was a conscious decision by Wizards of the Coast. Their thought, because at this point, remember, 5th edition is brand new. They don't know that there's this huge boon of new players coming. So they said if they're new, they'll play Lost Minds of Fandelver in the starter set because they're new. But if they're veterans, hardcore, we want the true, like, brutal kill your character D, D experience then they'll play horde of the dragon queen that was i heard that from insider wizards people that that was the conscious choice so i thought that was you know but think about that decision five years ago versus how they are now they're like no everybody's new super friendly everything's great they're like nope just murder them in the first session let's get it over with <laughs> teach them this is how we roll <laughs> um, but what I, again, <laughs> my point that I was trying to get to, uh, is I think I've learned a lot more because it's a short time period and it is technically for entertainment purposes, right? To allow more things, uh, to happen. Like this probably shouldn't happen or the rules don't say this can really happen or this spell doesn't necessarily work that way, but more often than I would normally do in a, like a regular campaign or with my friends that I play with whenever we have a chance at home uh, where I'll be real dicks to them because that's just how we play with each other. Um, but I'll be like, ah, sure. Let's do that because it's fun. Uh, why not? Let's make the dog immortal. You know what I mean? Let's make it the god of all dogs. It's great. You know, that kind of a thing. Um, all right, would you IRL replace body parts with a magic one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what does it do? Do we get to pick? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I think it's so more of a philosophical question. Guy. Would you? Like, it, it's not like, would you replace your eyeball with an undead lich eyeball? If the opportunity presented itself, like, you are you as you are right now, Everything is the way it is, but you're like, man, there's this sweet magic arm, but you got to cut your own arm off to put it on. Would you do it? 100%. I mean, if it's magic, would, like, yeah. I mean, I yes, really, we're not going to... I yeah. would really like to say yes, but I would not cut off my fucking arm. I would be like, no, let me sell this. Oh, okay, but if, money. if somebody came to you and was like, magic is real, like, this is <laughs> all you have to do, like, fuck I would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I'm such like a, I'm a fun police person. No. I'd be like, no one's am amputating anything today. Everybody go to bed. <laughs> so self-amputation, I probably could not do, but I don't know. I feel like I could find someone who would be willing to cut my arm there, off. There, there is enough there. whiskey in the world for me to do. Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> There's Celeste. Okay. Oh. 
<laughs> oh. Just it's say a good it. thing I have a friend like Celeste. <laughs> there you go. What? Yeah, you need your arm cut off? Sure, I got you. You got a magic one to replace it? I hope so. If not, I'll still do it. Oh, yeah. You tell me. Um, if any of you really I, needed your arm cut off, I would I would be there for you. I actually, I have a, a, an important reason. And that's, I, I've been struggling with my arm this week. And... <laughs> It doesn't what, have what? to be an arm. With my arm it, this week. It could no, be, so you know, I magic pinky. I don't know. Oh, I, I'm saying arm. I'm saying. This oh, okay. Would you would, be yeah. My arm because I'm, I'm disagreeing with my arm. But this is a long-term disagreement because I have reflex sympathetic, uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy in my right arm, uh, in my neck and shoulder. And so, like, post Gen Con was miserable because, like, it just hurt so bad. And I finally, like done some things like massages and exercises to get it back into a normal state but even still it like is still kind of a lot of pain and discomfort mm -hmm. it's not as much as it, it was like two weeks ago so uh yeah I'm at that point especially right now where I'm just like gosh my arm oh I hate this and mm -hmm. a magic arm would be better is there for those of you who would we know Katie wouldn't is there, what's the, what's the stopping point? How much magic is, if they're like, so we got like magic arm, sure. Maybe magic eyeball, possibly. But if they're like new magic legs, new magic neck down, like, is there a cutoff? I mean, like how, like I how much and attach it to a metal thing, I'd be dead at that point. Well, no, it, it's it, not because it's magic. It's magic. <laughs> like if you could be like, you could have a magic, like trade bodies with a magic person. Like, oh what? man, who knows like, now? Oh shit. Um, that yeah, I'm really just fun. wondering. We know, we know Renee would do an arm for sure. But like, if they were like, hey, your legs function perfectly fine, but we could give you magic legs. Would, is that too much? Or like, hey, we know everything's working okay, but what about a magic body? Your head and brain, magic body. Yeah, I'd do it. Okay. I mean, if I could donate my body to science and then adopt Oh, so body. it's a humanitarian thing. Yeah. It's for yeah. chair, I see. Celeste yeah. for the people. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. If I can be Alita Battle Angel, I will be Alita Battle Angel. All right, Angel. that answers that question. Not... <laughs> Um, oh, God. oh my right. god, new magic butt. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm driving people to the hospital is what's gonna happen. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> it's such a poor Gen Con decision. It's, always, it's, it's magic. Um, so kind of keying off of that, I guess, in a, in a degree, what aspect of your character are you jealous of in real life? Uh, I really would like to say flying. <laughs> We can, that was a part of your character at a point, so sure. Yeah, I I mean, obviously flying. That's sickening. That's awesome. I can bake pies already, so I don't need that part. Those Fair. are my two best qualities. Is <laughs> you can just say magic if you prefer to, like, the ability to cast spells. It's pretty broad spectrum, but it's still cool if that's a thing you would like. Actually, no. I want to be able to keep a fucking plant alive. That's what I want to be <laughs> That is all right. <laughs> hmm. I think I'm. I'm really. I'm jealous of Leo's like confidence. I wish mm. I had that. Um. Like he just believes in what he's doing all the time. That yeah, is to right a fault. Thing. Yeah, but also imagine how much better your life would be if you genuinely thought everything you were doing was right and you. Oh yeah. Oh, it'd be right. amazing to have that kind of straightforward conviction. Yeah, that kind like, of like. Like, that would be amazing. You would never fucking question what you're doing or what's happening, and you would just know that you're doing the right thing. Like, that is something I admire deeply about him. And yes, sometimes it makes him like, what the hell are you doing? But also, I think it worked out for the best in, in most times, and I think that's sort of what makes you a hero, believing what you're doing is the right. Nice. Well, <laughs> what would you keep from Odella? Or Ava, uh, I guess. Oh, I didn't even think about Ava, but I love we'll say Odella then. Make it easier. Yeah, uh, uh, for Odella, I mean, she's got a lot of bad qualities. I <laughs> just I don't want to go with just magic, because I mean, obviously. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. um, I would love to have her like ability to handle money responsibly. That's a good one. 
<laughs> like and be able to like negotiate with people and like I just I want her business sense. That's good. <laughs> That's not all heroes are super. Um but yeah, I don't know. For Ava, I would just she had the confidence of a crazy person and I loved it. Like she just went out, she I mean, she was like Leo. She put on random things that she found all the time. Yeah, so. that's fair. Dungeon pants. <laughs> she found cowboy boots with spurs and like a whip or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, put them on from a dead man. I think she took it off a corpse. I don't she even know. She did take it off a corpse. Yes, she did. Yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> what about you, Renee? So I feel like this is such a tricky question because uh, Rid has a lot of, of characteristics that I... I don't really want um but I think what I'm gonna say and this is kind of a tricky one to say but Rid has the ability to be a different person for different situations Mm. um and while I like who I am and I like owning that there's definitely some times where it would be easier to to step into another role for a little while and just have a different experience and I think I kind of envy Rid for being able to do that that's one of the reasons she did so much like self exploration was just like becoming different people and trying to figure out how the world uh, around them reacted and who they were each time they created a new persona. And mm-hmm. I, I do envy that a little bit, especially in uh, circumstances where um, it would be great for me to just like get away for a little bit. Sure. <laughs> like, I'm such an escapist. So like if I wanted a weekend retreat, I would totally take on another persona and just like go rent an Airbnb somewhere and just have like a few days as a different person. There you go. Uh, all right, if you guys could swap uh, characters with anyone who would you want to play I would play Rid okay. because I think she's such a cool character concept and if one day I was just like I don't know really I'm not really feeling uh, being peppy peppy Remy then you can be Jalar if the situation calls for it uh, uh, or you could be fucking Vera <laughs> mm, that's true uh, but yeah, I think that's great. And I want turn up for my own. So. Yes. <laughs> Valid. Uh, what about you, the rest of you? Anybody you'd want to play other? I mean, if you had to, who would you want to play as an option other than your character? Obviously, you're tied to yours. It's like your child, but. Yes, I'd say Odella. Um, because I mentioned earlier like that this process has been really interesting for me in figuring out like the characters I want to create. And I feel like Odella would be a challenge for me, something that like I haven't done yet. And uh, Laura did so well as Odella, like revealing some of those moments that were shocking and (laughs) dismaying for the rest of us. But like, I feel like that would be different, something I haven't experienced on stream yet in my gaming role-playing life. And I would like to try my hand, see, uh, see if I could pull Odella off nice similarly (laughs) yeah I actually created Odella because I was like I'm gonna try to go outside of my comfort zone because I am not smooth as we found out very quickly (laughs) (laughs) uh, on stream um and I don't know that's why I feel like I finally at the end of the campaign was like okay I get her I get what she's trying to do I get it like and then I died and then I was like oh great no I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, but yeah if I had to be anybody else I'd probably pick Roswin because that's way more my like playing speed plus I love druids druids are so much fun <laughs> although I don't think I would have picked the circle that she picked hmm. So nobody wants to play Leo. Uh, <laughs> Celeste wants. Celeste wants to play Leo. That's what I it comes down to. I, co- I would never be able to play Leo. No. I don't think I could either. I, honestly, like, uh, I, my little ace arrow heart is over here. Like, whoo! Every time Leo like does anything, <laughs> I feel like it might be Leo. Might be the challenge that I try like five years into my D and D season. But like Odell first, then Leo. Well, Cardinals and Caverns wants to play Leo, so I think 
yeah, I would play Leo's slightly less handsome uh, twin brother who is just trying to be. <laughs> mm, mm. Um, no, if I, oh shit. Cause I can see myself really wanting to play Roswin cause I love support. Um, mm. I love being a support character and like being the heart of the party would be like a cool, I think thing. And also like playing in the world of dragons too, like, and being a druid and all about that natural balance. I feel like being a druid would probably be the, my choice. Mm. Though, though Rid has the cool punchies and I could do black Aww. backflips. Yeah. Uh, and then I've always wanted to play a warlock too. And I never have, so I could. I mean, Odella. Rid's a warlock I mean, too. Yeah, Rid's so. a monster. Oh, okay, maybe Rid. <laughs> uh, revisited where Celeste just plays every character. Uh, who <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll I'll ha it'll be a lot of work on my a puppet end. show. But what I'll do is I'll write an adventure, and then I'll play it four times with Celeste. But I'll write it in such a way that she doesn't know that. <laughs> Like what? What one character is doing is impacting the other ones, and then I'll just cut it together with four <laughs> Celestes, and it's Celeste playing all four characters. Oh my god, that would be that a hot would be mess. Insane. It would. It would be way more work than it than it needs to be, but I would I would enjoy that. So, Cardinals and Caravans. As a fellow dungeon master, I know you have a favorite player character. Who is it? That is. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna answer it, but it's a not. A, it's not a. I don't know. Uh, that's a <laughs> shitty question, but it is what it is. Um, so I feel like I. I mean, I gotta say it's Roswin because she's been here from the start, right? I mean, I love all of the characters. They all have. I mean, look at the stuff I've been able to do with Odella's character, right? Like, look at all of the intrigue and you know, social mystery surrounding that character. And that's awesome. Like, and a lot of that came from an, a death, which was by accident, right? We didn't know that was going to happen, but it spawned this whole, like, character-defining piece of that character. And figuring out how I could bring in Rid period into the campaign, uh, and then let alone how are we going to balance other personas and how are other people going to interact with that, but then there's the weird thing, like, Rid is Rid right now, but these other characters know her as somebody else, but they don't know that it's that somebody else. <laughs> so there's that piece. And then, like, Leo, what am I going to say about Leo? He he makes his own drama. Uh, all I have to do is put a couple of PCs with a couple of interesting physical characteristics, like a rainbow cat suit, for example, and it spins uh... into a whole other thing, and I love it. Uh, but, you know... Katie and Roswin have been there since episode one. Ava was there for seven episodes, and then Odella and then went. <laughs> and then I get to play her, which was very cool. That was very cool. I'll, I'll legitimately admit that. That was a good time. But, you know, for those of you who don't know, we started this campaign in, like, October, December of 2016. was when we started Horde of the Dragon Queen. And in September of 2016... I talked to Katie and brought up this whole idea of like Selene and Sailor Moon and all of that two months before the campaign started. And you guys got to watch the transition of that happen over 60 some odd episodes. Like that's where it comes to talk to your players, right? Figure out what they want and learn their story and make it a part of it. But it's a two way street. If the players don't give you anything to work with. You can't work it into the story. And you need to make that happen. So that's, sorry, Bork is being a jerk and over here. All right, that's that question. Moving on. Well, um, I do want to say one thing. Yeah. Uh, thank you for letting me just like switch characters. Yeah. And, like actually like having it be a thing because that's the one thing when like you're playing in like a, a real life campaign, you're not streaming or whatever. Like sometimes you're like, oh gosh, like I really hate this character. Like I didn't hate Ava but she mm -hmm. just didn't fit into the group at the time. Uh, and I was like, and I'm like, I wish I could change or something like that. And then you change, but then you're like, well, I, I still like wish that character had something to do with this campaign or whatever. So it was, it's, it was nice like having her come back, especially because I guess she did mean a lot to Roswin, but I, it, was, it was nice being worried about her that entire time. Like, what's she doing? Like, oh, she had all the money in the party. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I had um, so much stuff when I left. <laughs> it's, to add to that. Yeah. Uh, it's really, you mentioned it was hard to like bring me in and like, I feel that too. Like it's always hard to jump into an existing campaign and like feel like your character belongs. But uh, Ted especially did so well helping like write that reveal and figuring out like what would be best for me and what Rid would do and yada yada uh, ahead of that. But then also uh, I felt really quickly adopted and welcomed by the rest of the Belladonnas. Uh, the cast first before the characters, but the characters soon afterwards. And uh, that that made it so much easier. So I know that that's a difficult transition for a lot of people in campaigns uh, mm. on, on and off stream, but it can be done. And I'm really glad and grateful that this group was so welcoming to me. And I think part of that too, to our comment earlier about streaming, right? Um, I feel like if this was an in-person game and like we were all sitting down at a table, we were off stream, we had unlimited time, like an eight hour session, like people could have been more of a jerk to you, Renee, and your character because they're like, we don't know you. Why should we trust you? You already proved you're somebody who's, who you didn't say you were. Why you know what I mean? Rainbow hair. No one trusts rainbow hair. Exactly. I'll immediately. Trust yeah. Well, her. I but, did not. <laughs> but to yes, but I'm saying like it's it's a stream it's and like there's that's a part of it and that's good and that's can make some intrigue but at some point you're kind of just like all right they're here though let's like we gotta kind of facilitate this along a little bit so that's part of that um so what if your characters drew the fate card what would they do so for those of you who don't know what the fate card is it's worded that basically you have this card and realics, reality's fabric reshapes anew and you can erase or avoid one event in the past. Um, and you can, you know, and that's how that works. If you had drawn that card, you don't have to use it immediately, but let's say for the purposes of this, that it happens at the end of the campaign because then it's more fun. Um, you can erase or avoid one event that happens sometime in history. It's one singular event that you can erase, but that may have a butterfly effect on how things go. Odella dying. Oh, okay. Oh, that would change a lot. That, That's would, a good one. that was exactly what Leo would use it for. Okay. Wow. Mm. Boom, knew that one. Yeah. <laughs> right the hell away. I can't Leo. answer this question. Okay, fair. That's abstaining is a... Um, I'm going to add just a little, little tag on to the end of that. Because we might dive into what it would be in future episodes of the Belladonna. So like Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Stick around. We'll be back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I doubt the fate card's gonna come up. I'll throw that out there, but No, I mean valid, but like Yes, I, I get what you're saying. Well, the character <laughs> oh yes, I I got you. That makes perfect sense. Oh man, Odella as she is now, I don't know what she would do undo the part where <laughs> Rosalind remembers <laughs> yeah, yes. right now, everything's fine but like though. no but like as she is now like leo like from her from her point of view like leo accepts Just her accepted and, like, her yeah yeah like so like things are fine um leo takes or uh, odella takes me as the person who would store it and be like i'm gonna find a reason I'll to use this, this i'll need this later yeah. Like, it's definitely another one of her items that she would just stick in there. Now, Odella, pre-death, she would, <laughs> this sounds really selfish, but she would go back all the way when she was, like, four years old and prevent herself from ever being, like, taken from, by the Temple of Ilmater. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that would be, <laughs> that would be, that's a thing you could do, and then that would have a weird butterfly effect to how that changed her future. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that Roswin, which it wouldn't really be feasible in a, in a gameplay sense. Um, at, well, it could, but it would be difficult. She would probably go back to uh, when we were in that cave and she would probably take Ava's side and smash those dragon eggs so that Ooh. she never ran away. Ooh. Um, and because that wouldn't, that wouldn't remove Odella from the picture. They, she'd still be she'd there. She'd still show yeah. up, yeah. But Ava would feel supported and probably be still be part of the party. Yeah, that was really her one main beef was she just couldn't rectify the fact that you guys were helping dragons that you had clearly told her 
that chromatic dragons were evil and metallic dragons were good and now you're saving chromatic dragons because they might be good and she's like no <laughs> like, there's a line this is where my line is <laughs> Yeah, Roswin's line is kind of like that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, so there was a question: Is Horde of the Dragon Queen on YouTube? Yes, the whole playlist of all thirty episodes and a Q and A episode in there is up on the YouTube page. I also just released kind of a campaign intro piece on Nerd Immersion Plays. If you want to check that out, it's just me kind of going over a very high level with links to that. Uh, that's an option that you can do and I started to look into making the recaps because it's the whole have half of a campaign on one channel and the latter half on another we need to recover that so you can get yourself up on that so what would have happened if Tiamat did get summoned well um I just so happen to have contacts with a friend uh Mr. James Intracasso who ran that exact scenario at D&D in a castle that was the story that he ran, was this is in the future, uh, the players, the heroes fail, and you're now in post-apocalyptic uh, TMO 1 scenario. And I would reach out to him and say, hey, how did you run this? And there is some stuff up on his blog that you can get some information about it. But um, I would really want to talk to him and see like, hey, this is my story, this is what happened. You know, has someone who ran this what we you know what tips would you give me but i don't know i think it would be an interesting uh it would also be an option if the players if anybody wanted to swap out a character for a new character we could say that unfortunately that character fell at some point in the history and i wouldn't be like oh team was summoned it's the next day we'd give it some time right to get in the mad max kind of scenario which could roll into Descent into Avernus going back into, you know, Avernus where Tiamat is, that whole story, if I wanted to go that way. Um, but yeah, if you're like, you know what, I think Leo is too headstrong, he would die. Because he'd run into battle and he'd probably get killed. So I'm going to play this character. Hey, why did he call me out? <laughs> yeah, well, we just talked about how he believes all that stuff, so. Yep, no, he totally would. Um, That's nail on the head. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. Um, <laughs> what's the most intoxicated any of y'all have been while streaming? <laughs> Pretty much a lot, but not on this channel. On somebody this, else's. Yeah, I, I don't. This game, no. I, wait, uh, well. Mine was on this stream. Oh, was it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember, I remember exactly rolling. because <laughs> we were all at the primp and pie and it was like getting kind of near the end of the usual time it would stop and i'm like slamming back vodka shots i'm like whatever we're having fun and this is when roswin goes downstairs oh to the quiche. quiche and suddenly ted comes in with this level one billion monk and just five finger <laughs> death punch me and i get knocked out like i think i got knocked out like three times in this fight and so like i'm like when i get back up i'm trying to like do as much damage as i can because i'm like i'm gonna be out next round again i just know it so i'm rolling dice and i'm so fucking drunk and i'm just like what the fuck are numbers how many did i roll 80 like <laughs> that was uh super fun until battle yeah then it was a fucking disaster <laughs> um Again, not on this channel. Ha, ah, maybe on this channel. Not on this channel. I don't. I think I've been. I mean, there was one game that both uh, that Katie, Laura, and I were all in, where I think Katie and I both killed a bottle of champagne each in the course of like a two-hour session. <laughs> we were both pretty drunk at that point. Uh, that was a good time. What? Yeah. What's that one? Uh, it was on Light's channel with Kester and Virgil and Stella. We were like, woo! Yep. <laughs> just yep. Yep. down in the whole I bottle of shit. I think we got some street meats on that. That, that was the street meat episode, yeah. Because yeah. 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 we're like, both, wow. Katie and I are both like, man, that would be great right now. Um, <laughs> I think mine was, I was trying to learn how to play if uh, big motherfucking crab truckers. That's a good which... one to drink. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. And there's like a rule. It was like a home rule or maybe it's in the game or something. It's like, whatever you want to do. So like, I don't know. There's like a drinking rule. And I was like, I was like, fuck yeah. And then like, I got, I was like hype and I hadn't eaten all day. And then like one, another person on the stream was like, oh, I don't drink. So I was like, I was like, I'll drink for you. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I'm just drinking for two. Um, I don't remember a lot of that. No, no, it was fun, I think. I, <laughs> I have no idea how long it lasted. I was just like, wow, I'm a crab. Like, <laughs> we were like, yeah, it was like a Mad Max game. We're like chasing through the desert and I played like, a, oh, I was also playing like a rock star crab. So I was Shut like, like sure. I'm so fucking, my character was like, I'm so fucking drunk. I can't like hold things. And then I was like, I'm just going method. <laughs> um yeah it's uh <laughs> that, that was a hot mess it was a hot fair. mess but this game oh i've been uh, pretty good yeah um uh, well fun fact for me i don't drink so, so that answers that question that's but okay. if you count being like sleepy drunk <laughs> a 24 hour stream with steve where i was uh, just like doing whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a good one <laughs> I was so tired because I think I picked up some extra shifts. For yeah, people. you did. Yeah, you really helped me out on that one. So thank you for that. That was a good time. And I was like, okay, I'm a gargoyle statue grave cleric. Let's go. Uh -huh. I, was so much. I, I was playing with you and I had no idea who you were and that we would be playing together. Yeah. And in yeah, love, that's true. Uh, yeah. Nine months later. Yeah, you watched me get married to... No, you weren't in that one, but... No, we're you... Bookshelf, yeah. Bookshelf came yeah, back. Yeah, uh, I met you in Bookshelf. Um, yep. Did you see Bookshelf turn into me? Yes, I was there okay. for that one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're curious, look back up for the 2017 24-hour stream here on the channel. By the way, the, the rest of the 2018 one still exists. I just haven't had a chance to edit it because it keeps crashing my computer because the file is so large. I have recording. been re-watching it, so you should, though, maybe sometime. I there, know yeah, I, I'm going to <laughs> get to it. Thing. I think but I did the I've... first four sessions. <laughs> yeah, and I think I'm on about to start the fourth in my like whole sentimental... Oh, that's where, where Che Che finds the Dragon Balls, I think. <laughs> che Che, man. <laughs> can't wait oh my god i forgot how much i love that stream and whoa chad yeah <laughs> yeah by the way there will be a 24 hour stream at some point in the fall uh for extra life uh i'm not doing all 24 hours this time though so uh what the storyline will be whether it's a continuation of that storyline which a lot of people seem to really like so it might happen so um but i'm thinking we might break it up maybe into eight hour sessions like not total but like you know, three DMs over eight hours. So each person runs it for eight hours. You get your 24 that way. That way it's not crazy stressful, but that's to be determined. We'll get there. I promise I won't kill any children this time. I don't believe, I don't believe you, but that's fair. <laughs> uh, does the book even say anything about what happens to those eggs if you keep them? No, it doesn't. It's really like you have eggs. If you you also might not find them because the perception check is pretty high to find them uh, in that area and like you could find one but the other two are hidden so you can find them and it is 100 up to the dungeon master and the party what happens with those eggs for example in my campaign uh, uh we killed two of the dragons i addled the eggs and then we sold the dragon shell the eggshells intact and then someone had a zentar in contact and we sold the other one to them because we wanted money because we were a bunch of dudes who hadn't played D&D &D in four years and were like, murder hobos, let's get all the money. And I was like, guys, we really shouldn't do this. And they're like, shut up. And I was like, well, you're six of you and one of me. So, all right. <laughs> I'll sit here and grumble about it. But uh, Joe asks, what was everyone's favorite battle? Um, go ahead. Yeah. So... <laughs> Jinx. Uh... This, so yeah this is go way back but i really really enjoyed being ava and turning <laughs> on the on the party you like that shooting was, them with the arrows and all that fun yeah, stuff setting the the tent on fire to draw them out then like using my extra special bow because i got better advantage with the light to like shoot the eggs and then just the sheer shock 
of Katie killing my owl with her moonbeam <laughs> was, uh, was insane. <laughs> So that was a great, great time. Um, I don't with Odella. I I don't know. Probably the last battle was my favorite. Okay. I like the Tiamat battle. So my favorite battle, though, I feel a little bit bad about it because two of our party members were dead. Um, <laughs> I really liked the Ava battle, but mostly from the perspective of um, I thought it was a. It's interesting when you don't win a fight in D and D. You know, it's like you win so many. You know, because generally your DM is like pro your party. You know, and like, uh, and also, I think five E from what I've heard is a lot more geared towards the players being stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's interesting to have the aftermath of oh fuck we lost. You know, sure. and dealing with that, and also. Um, it was interesting for me to play as a player because I was really trying to stick true to my character of she's only looking forward and yeah she's you know trying to cast Moonbeam to give her friends advantage and stuff like that and to do some damage but like that's not her focus she wants to go get her sister so having her only look forward and then like turning back to disaster was kind of like a, a fun role-playing opportunity I think for me so that was probably my favorite all right uh I can I can jump in um I really loved like the first few fights that we were in when Leo felt like a total badass <laughs> I, think, I think things got progressively harder <laughs> um as we went along but like uh, I just remember being so stoked when all the way when we were back in the sea of moving ice and I squared off with that seal tribe guy yeah, and like I had the one-on-one -on -one fucking combat and like kicked his ass and then immediately after that white dragon fight um, was one of my favorites. I was just like climbing around on his back and it was awesome and like just like so stoked. Not a care in the world, Leo, just there killing his first dragon. That was awesome. Um yeah, so I <laughs> long for those days when life was simple. <laughs> um, and then I think my second favorite fight was uh, it was the the Sandman dragon fight because mm. that was like that was right cool. yeah because that was like right after Leo had like met his dad and got his like sweet bard loot because before that he really didn't use any of his like he just hit stuff with a sword. Yeah, so this was like that. That was the big shift where like he became more of a like a, a caster and using his bard stuff and like really exploring that side of his character. And that fight was so cool. I was just like jumping around, like hasting and slowing and baiting, and that was that was a really really cool fight. Renee. So my favorite fight is when we were ambushed by the ancient black dragon at uh, the Primp and Pie. Mm, that nice. was cool yeah there were layers to this um i had not fought a dragon an ancient dragon in D, D before so there was like a level of terror and adrenaline that was just like <laughs> coursing through me for that entire battle and i remember like i remember writing down uh, all of the the adversaries that we were up against and there was like a moment where uh, Rid was frightened and like it's okay because she's a monk but like golly gee I was just feeling it and on the edge of my seat the entire time and then that was also uh, the moment that <laughs> the dragon balls went off back in Waterdeep which was like <laughs> Just a cherry on top of an already good <laughs> battle. And then also uh, the big reveal with Leo's dad, which mm. just like was so. Oh, fuck, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I was actually super surprised. When you said my second favorite battle, I was like, oh no, Celeste is going to take mine. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think so... it was during the fight. Yeah. Oh, no, here you go, man. Ride the lightning. It was so jaw dropping. Oh, yeah. So, like, that's that epic ending to how like Leo and Rid ended up like getting atop the dragon and and taking it down was just like so. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It was very emotional for me, and I was I was adrenaline, and then like ah oh, badassery, and then yeah, just wild. It was wild. 
so many good fights. I loved okay. fighting dragons. I love fighting dragons. Even I, if I got, and I have gotten my ass kicked, I've taken thousands, yes. literal thousands of damage over the course of yes, this that is true. Campaign. I will, I will also say, um, it's you know the book doesn't have you fight as many dragons as you'd think. It really focuses on a lot of white dragons, which are the le I mean, they're the weaker, so that's probably why. The book doesn't have you fight a single ancient dragon at all. None. They're all adult dragons, and towards the end of the campaign, that's a joke. If you run them as the book runs them, like you saw these guys not necessarily wipe the floor with, but defeat ancient dragons. And like I was just like, yeah, this is an ancient dragon with the eye of Vecna, and they still won. Granted, I did give them a lot of magic items and things that made them very powerful and abilities and things, but everyone likes their characters to be OP and have a lot of power because it's fun and it lets you do cool things and you never feel like you're hamstrung for options on what you can and can't do. Um, but the game is about Tiamat rising. There should be more dragons. The book never has you technically face a red dragon. You don't actually have to face one in the entirety of the book if you run it as written. There's the potential that you might fight, I think, a young one as like an in-between mission thing, but never like a true focus on that. Uh, or a black dragon either? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, oh, the book doesn't? No. And to be fair, like there were some times I was scared for our lives. <laughs> I remember like the first, the we paused in the middle of the final battle and I like I've been so hyped up before coming into it and then I went back to work the next day I was like we're gonna die y'all like we're <laughs> still gonna die and my coworkers were like no tell us about it like what happened what was your strategy how did it go and I was just like two people down like feeling real rough about it like just uh and then <laughs> And then we came back the next week and I was like, oh no, wait, we've got this. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if we would have had it if we didn't stop in the middle of it. Cause I yeah. think we were so hyped and plus uh, yeah, reset to regroup. And I mean, the, the worst one, I, the worst one was the Abba fight. I was like, oh, like this is like so stacked against us. Like adventures are way scarier than dragons. And dragons yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the nature of, of fifth edition. You yeah. know, it's dragons are not as scary as they were. Uh, so you got to try to make them scary. And that's what I tried to do by jumping up the power level. Well. Thank you. <laughs> jumping up the power level on the dragons and things like that. But yeah, they introduced those two black dragon twins and that never comes up again. Um, the only ones you fight is the green one, the two white ones, um, the blue one that you fought earlier on. And then potentially if you fight some in the final fight and maybe like a cult like skirmish in between and that's it. So I was like, that's dumb that you don't fight one of every dragon. And let me think of interesting ways to impact the story. Um, so like, let me throw an ancient dragon at them, but give them a dragon on their side to balance it out. And then later on, I was like, nope, screw it. I'm just throwing a dragon. I'm giving them an eye of Vecna. Let's see how they do. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh -huh. you're welcome. Um, uh, I'm excited to read the book now. Um, yeah, Because yeah. I have this book, and I like I've read. Yeah, you'll see how much, much every <laughs> single D and D book that is out there, and this one has been sitting on my shelf. I'm like, one day. Um, <laughs> I, now it is that day. <laughs> yeah, you'll see how much I changed. How much isn't in the book? Um, it's like it's such a thin book. I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's like seventy pages. It's nothing. Oh, sorry, 90 pages. 90-something. All right, well, I but, know what I'm doing tonight. Yeah, 80, 88 if you don't count the appendices with the monsters in it. Um, so I think Celeste asked this question, but if you could respect your character as anyone as anything else... You have to. You have, you have to respect to. your character as something else, what would you do? Wizard. Keep... Okay, mm. smart. So I could go proper necromancy. There yeah. you go. You don't get all the high level necromancy spells if you take cleric, which is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm technically not a cleric, but I have access to all the cleric spells. It's, sure. Yeah. I love Divine Soul. It's so good. Um yeah, I would take I would do some cleric levels probably just to fit in with my backstory. Mm. Um because I'm a healer, but that's pretty much like 
I don't, I don't really have like a lot of connect. I'm not even circle of the moon. Like yeah. I don't really technically have a lot of connections to my goddess other than I'm a good girl. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I've mentioned it before a lot in the last games, especially, but I feel like Paladin would fit uh, for Leo pretty easily. Because, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the fighter bard thing, it was really cool. It definitely wasn't optimized to be the best it could be. I mean, it's um, still good. I mean, bard yeah. or two levels of fighter and a spellcaster is great because action surge and double spells is phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I I loved yeah having this this build, and I was like really into playing this build, um, so that was cool. But yeah, I think as a paladin, I could do a lot, and then I think his kind of like attitude would go <laughs> would go really well with a paladin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I you maybe like fighter rogue because like Rid just had kind of. A, a way of handling things that was very monk is yeah. very monk and so uh i don't think that she would ever really lean into uh spell casting more but it might, might be nice to have and so she could either get that from uh the fighter track or from the the rogue track just depending on what subclasses she went with and what she uh furthered the most but uh i think it would definitely be a multi-class in that regard taking one of those uh, spellcaster E subclasses to give her that. Uh, I know, I guess that's like keeping her pretty similar to what she is, but like- No, she, that's fair she's though. She's kind of, she's, she feels like a little bit of a one trick pony, but like really good at it and- Yeah, really you'd be doing more that. single damage hits than more multiple uh, yeah. hits for lesser damage, I feel like. The if, rogue. if I want to get real specific, now that knowing what I do about Leo and everything, I would actually do uh, the Jetpack 7, the Dragon Rider oh, uh, that's nice. build. I feel like, oh man, that would be Jetpack rad. 7, Legendary Dragons. I feel like I have a coupon code somewhere. <laughs> I'll get it and I'll put it in the description um, somewhere. Yeah, because um, knowing that he's like part dragon, like I would want to like lean into that shit. Listen, so the, the story is not done. Yeah. Father-son bonding is yet to happen to bring out more of that dragony nature or not. We'll see. <laughs> um, so one of the questions was favorite NPC to PC interaction. Um, like I my PC or like anybody's PC? Uh, I guess it's pretty much just in general. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I fuck, we all know I love Miriam. Um, mm. But I, as much as I love Miriam, I think the most fun to interact with is fucking Dirk. He's yeah. Like, oh, Dirk! Oh. <laughs> we still have stuff he owes us. Like he's been making stuff for us that we've never gone back. Because Pygot needs his armor. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yep. I need to skywrite some more for him. Maybe he's holding yeah. hostage. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, you've all heard me scream, "Dad!" Like, yeah. at least <laughs> times. Um, so building that relationship was my fucking favorite i just lost my shit everything to do with like leo finding his dad was amazing um also shout out to like real beginning i had a conversation leo was outside of the bar where we were watching daft monk with that like gnome guy who <laughs> sold tobacco yeah <laughs> I just invited him to the party and like we just talked about life and how you have to live in the moment and he's like I feel like I really relate to you you taught me so I was like yeah man like you just got to do what's in your heart like go for it and I feel like that foreshadowed like everything so like <laughs> and he gave me it was it was like my first trinket too I think it was like a like a case like with a like an arrowhead stuck in it or something uh, that was that was one time. Of that was one of my favorites too. Oh, and the whole Alyssa thing. I wish I had had more time to resolve. I that. wish it had gone the way we had talked about, where uh, shit after, went down with yeah. uh, Odella. Leo was going to go seek solace in Alyssa. I think that was because my audio was shitty and I didn't want to steal focus. So I'd like. Ugh. That would have been an interesting. Oh, yeah. Of events. Oh, yeah. But you, Renee. I don't know. I've been trying to think of any NPCs that Rid really interacted with, and there weren't a ton. <laughs> well, it could be one of the other players and an NPC. 
doesn't have to be necessarily red. Okay, that does help because I think then uh, red and rosin are my favorite. You're so cute. <laughs> I think we're really cute. I think they were really cute. And I love that. Uh, I love seeing their friendship grow and evolve. And um, like they became kind of like partners in crime, but also in giggles and uh, <laughs> being there to support each other and hold each other up. And I really, I really loved that. So I don't know. I'm kind of excited to see uh, what Katie and I could do in future games with their relationship as well. I think one of my, it's, I mean, a lot of, uh, obviously everything everyone's already said, I really enjoyed. Uh, but I think one of my favorite interactions was that random magic item shop that was called like the tiger's eye or like the cat's eye, which is just a name of an actual shop in Waterdeep. And I just made it a little creepier, like it appeared out of nowhere. And the party is like, it's Rakshasa. 100 percent of rakshasa and i never said and i have not said one way or another but that's one of those scenarios where the party just comes up with her or something and you're like you know what maybe <laughs> I was and you the just one in that shop wasn't i mm -hmm. yeah you were the only one there but like oh just God, celeste's God. face the whole it time was me screaming with my mic on silent like well, yeah! <laughs> which i do a lot uh, admittedly <laughs> That was what I was going to say for mine was not exactly that shot, but the interactions between Odella and her patron just watching oh, Celeste, Celeste squirm. <laughs> yep. The entire thing was so great. Ah, I hate it. <laughs> and then uh, I do have a secondary one, which is Pie Got With Anybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That hasn't come up as much because you had the conversation. But yeah, for those of you who told me about Pygot, so I had to talk to him. But yeah, but if you go back to Horde of the Dragon Queen, there are tasteful nudes everywhere. Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> Getting assaulted Especially, by tasteful nudes. I think my favorite one was it uh, when they met Pickle. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> that was my favorite Pygot moment because Roswin and Pickle saw each other naked, and this was like in her most pure of pure times in her life. <laughs> it was like, oh my god. <laughs> So, Celeste, I don't know how far along you are. Have you met Pickle Boulder Shoulder yet? No. In your rereads of the Drizz novels? Oh, no. When I you have meet not yet. Pickle and Ivan Boulder Shoulder, imagine Roswin interacting with Pickle Boulder Shoulder, but them getting tasteful nudes of one another. <laughs> I know Joe's in the chat. Knows what I'm, Joe knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Uh, you, you boys and your man crush over these just uh yeah so he knows um all right so james jumped in just not um favorite dramatic moment we kind of touched on a couple but is there one that stands out outside of the ones we've already mentioned favorite dramatic moment in the story my favorite was when odella held monster on leo which I need <gasps> art for because yes, I did. totally it's stole that from me because <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> check the link. There's the good. there's the art. Oh, that's so good. Oh, yeah. oh, that was like that was devastating. I liked it even more because Leo was faced away, so he couldn't see the fact mm -hmm. that her eye was fully showing at that point. Uh, like because he has to use the lich eye to cast that spell on. She I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I've I've enjoyed like getting to like role play this like twisted romance. Um, because it's something I would do in my games as the DM, but no one has ever let me do that in other <laughs> games. So the fact that I've been able to enjoy it, because like weird romance in D D is like something I like live for. So this was like <laughs> Have you seen the Venture Maidens? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. And so the fact that Ted was like, hell yeah, dude, like go. And I was like, fuck yeah. So basically every twisted moment of this love story has been fucking great. Um, <laughs> hell yeah. So cool, man. I'll, I hope I get that again at some point. <laughs> man, it ain't over yet. I yeah, know. I have to deal with all that nonsense. Yeah, I really uh, enjoyed that you went along with that because I know I like checked in with you a couple times being like, are you okay? Like, I don't know. This is kind of mean. Oh, yeah. I was like, like, I don't really want to like do this to your character, but <laughs> I was like, 
hell yeah. And then I was also <laughs> like, Lord, don't tell me anything about what you're doing because I want to be genuinely surprised. And I constantly was. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> I want to say that it was probably the moment that Roz's wings got ripped off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh. slightly dramatic that one. Oh no so deeply furious like i could feel the bleed from how mad rid was mm-hmm. um in that that moment in that that like terror that like he was too far away to do anything but also like take down this dragon look what it just did but also like be there for my friend and it was just like this terrible like torn feeling in her and I remember feeling that too and just being like ah! um so I think that shout out to uh Celeste's dad reveal because I mentioned earlier that that was just like hugely emotional and it was um and I love being there for that I I think I cried a little bit but <laughs> as far as like personally Rid Rid's reaction in that moment influenced my reaction in that moment and it was the most memorable like Rend heart rending event in Rise of Tiamat. Oh, yeah, that was uh, that was really intense. Like literally, I have back tingles thinking of <laughs> <laughs> my phantom wings. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, first most dramatic moment. I think maybe. Uh, I mean, obviously, all of these moments super dramatic. Um, like calling back to Horde of the Dragon Queen, uh, Whistler's whole scenario where he couldn't like take out his own family, like that was pretty, pretty dramatic scenario for the party to deal with. Although I feel like they weren't as, I feel like most of the party wasn't as tuned into like the drama and like the, like it was still really deeply sad, but I feel like, I feel like if that event happened in Rise of Tiamat, it would have gotten a lot more. It would have been a more fo- you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like mm-hmm. the emotion would have been there more. Because uh, I think especially like right after that, didn't we fly into the cloud and shoot fireworks off and stuff like that? Yeah, pretty much. Yep. <laughs> um, Dramatic in a different way. <laughs> uh, that um, that's up there. Uh, Odella revealing to Leo that she was gone for eight years. Oh yeah, that like. <laughs> Like here's Rid gone for like a couple hours, uh, and like as far as dying goes, and Odella's been gone for eight years. Well, the I also too. Yeah, the Pharaoh revealed. Yeah, the one that's when, true. When she's like, oh, I "Just kill me," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> we were all like, "Uh, wait, what?" <laughs> Whoa, that was a <laughs> totally threw off everything that I was planning to do with my character because. Yeah. There was a whole thing, and then she's just like, "Just kill me!" And I was like, "Oh God, what's happening?" Oh God. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's all just so good. Um, uh, another question I see here, Joe asking again, Ted's favorite most memorable bit of role playing. Um, I feel like we touched on a lot of them thus far. You know, th- the most dramatic moments tend to be some of the more, um, you know more high role play scenarios um <laughs> let's see is there anything else that really jumps out at me as my favorite bit of role playing i don't know i feel like you guys didn't get to see the role playing that happened off stream in the one shot that i ran for celeste laura and katie when we introduced leo to the party <laughs> oh, but yeah. leo coming up and being like i'm here to join these great dragon slayers and they're like yeah all right weird guy <laughs> Uh, like serving pie and we're like what uh, who like i'm here now <laughs> yep he was such a fanboy at the beginning and we were just like okay no roslyn <laughs> would have never thought that, that she would argue so much with such a fanboy oh mm. <laughs> uh, yes that, that was an interesting interesting piece of role playing um i also think the uh the introduction uh, the transition of, uh, you know, bringing Renee into the campaign as a pre-established character that Celeste was hitting on. Yeah, oh, that, was oh, that was a I great got. transition. <laughs> that was I really good. That. I loved watching, because I was watching the episode before, and I was like, ah, Celeste, yes! <laughs> cool it, cool it! And I, and I was just like, what the fuck? Like, the no response. Time. And Ted's just like, eh. Like, 
Sorry, I, I can't make her like, choices, you know. I know, I know. I was like, this is so weird. I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> and people saying, oh, this girl Renee is going to join next session. I'm like, yeah, but how though? Yeah, you but like we're walking <laughs> alongside her character. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also oh, like- Oh, wait, yeah. oh, favorite role playing too. I loved getting to play Leo uh, in that episode we did at, it was Gen Con last year. When yeah, I play, with, oh, and the Princess with of the Apocalypse. the Princess of Apocalypse crew, that was so much fun. And then Igni and Leo totally hooked up. Uh, that was super fun, like playing in that and getting to interact with all their characters. That was, that was a ton of fun. I still want to do a mashup with them someday. Hell yeah. I mean, we can schedule that for the future today. They were throwing a lot of shade about who'd win in a fight. So, oh, yeah, uh, they totally would obviously. They, well, I mean, Gen Con Battle Royale. Mm. Okay, uh, bring it on. All right, there we go. All right, you heard it here first, folks. We'll see what we can make happen. I'll wake um, the fuck up out of bed in the middle of the night to fight. Yeah, them. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, Phantom Wings, great name for a band. Uh, you can keep that one. Um, <laughs> uh yeah civil war listen it's it's absolutely a thing people love like as long as they don't happen too often people love a good player versus player scenario and what i feel like in most of the popular ones or a lot of the ones people see they're always free for all they're never a 4v4 like party versus party across campaigns they have a paladin, a wizard. Well, it depends because probably Brittany won't be there. I'm gonna guess, yeah, so they won't have the paladin. Be barbarian, yeah. Yeah, it'll be Josh, uh, but I don't know if we'll get Davis to Which go. Which is really great for us, honestly, because uh, Brittany's a fucking werewolf. That's also yeah, true. So that a werewolf <laughs> paladin. Yikes. Yeah, uh, we'll also have to see if we can convince Davis to get out there to mm. fill that slot. Mm. Um, but you got a rogue and a wizard. And a barbarian. Um, so who knows? It'd be an interesting, interesting fight. Uh, we would win. I'd love to see how it goes. <laughs> um, so that we be... heels. How much prep time do I have? Yeah, we all, have all right, so Batman, listen. Healing. All right, we you know. So much healing. We we're not going to sit. Baby. We'll, we'll <laughs> see. Uh, I haven't decided what the scenario is. I feel like it's better if... It's not like a well, you know, this fight's coming, so plan for it. It's like boom, this, in the I moment. Have a day to raise an undead army. An undead army. Yeah. I have a day. <laughs> um, no, we'll say it'll probably be more <laughs> no, of a spontaneous. I can awaken so many trees. Like, yeah, yes, I know. I know. <laughs> just roll can... into this with undead and trees. Call, call <laughs> my dad. <laughs> yeah, uh, dad. <laughs> hey, dad, I need you to back me up. Like, it's super important. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. I'll help. Come over and help you mow your lawn. God. <laughs> um. So, uh, I think we've dried up on questions here. But if anybody has any additional questions for the party, uh, favorite, favorite pet. Favorite oh, favorite pet. I saw. No, we're a lot not of... allowed to pick Muffin, our god dog. Yes, of course. Our god dog. Um, uh, Poppy, favorite pet? Are you allowed to pick all of them. Okay, I'll allow okay, it. we have to pick ones that aren't ours. How about Ooh, we? Oh, uh, that's fun. Nice okay, okay, yes, okay. thank you. Okay. Does Floyd count as a pet? I know, I love Floyd. <laughs> uh, I <laughs> Floyd. Floyd is like he's, he's around. Person, a real person. Now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Flora is like one of my favorite Pokemon because they're so weird. Um, so for those I of you who don't know, because he hasn't existed really. <laughs> Wait. If you're going to talk about him, talk about him in the voice. <laughs> He's such a pain in the ass when you make me... So, for those of you who don't know, let me go back to the beginning. Rosman had an animated sunflower that she was calling, like, Helia, I think, was the name, right? Yeah, it was part of, like, the scientific name for sunflower. Yeah, and f <laughs> when she finally got the ability to cast Speak with Plants, she decided to speak to this sunflower, um, who she'd been, like, treating as, like, the perfect, like, little angel baby... You know, cute little sun. It's a sunflower, right? But I also treated it more as like Picket from Fantastic Beasts. So like a, the bow truckle could pick locks and all of that. But it turns out he could pick locks because basically it wasn't Helia. His name is Floyd. 
And he's kind of the guy, got a sort of a 1920, like, oh, don't worry about it, doll face. Everything's going to be fine. That kind of a guy. And that's the voice that comes out of this tiny little sunflower when she's talking to it. And he, uh, there's a whole long storyline about him and this, you know, this dame that he used to know that he was in love with and this whole long story. Uh, and it never really got explored. But, you know, very much told in a film noir black and white you know he was sitting in his pi office kind of a scenario and then she walked in and you know that kind of a thing um i'd like to uh change my favorite npc (laughs) (laughs) oh man when roswin found out about floyd oh that was the best that was the best episode when she just started talking to all the like plants and animals and ted was like god i have to come up with new names for new voices for things (laughs) so ted actually made my horse poppy into an emo poet because he thought that it would like make me not talk to her as much yeah i was really hoping for that it didn't work so i was like (sighs) so many feelings tell me about them in yeah. great detail i literally <laughs> looked up i was like let me make it like a dark like everything's my life sucks everything's awful and i literally typed in google worst emo poetry <laughs> and then the first result that came up was the poem that i had poppy read on the stream <laughs> uh Rosalind's still trying to get her to publish her work but yeah. you know, it's a process um <laughs> I would say I want to, it, this might be because it's it's fresh on our minds, right? But I think I think Wingman's pretty high up there as far mm. as. My uh, sweet boy. Yeah. Favorite pet that's not mine because I cannot pick between Turnip and Gazelle. Uh-uh. Mm. Um, fair, fair. But like, yeah, Wingman was, uh, had some great moments and was there in literally that like, penultimate moment like that was uh uh stuck so with clutch. me and it will stick with me for so long and i know that that wasn't so much about uh wingman doing something awesome so much as ted doing a dm thing but like <laughs> we all cared about him already because of how awesome he was and so it was just this sheer moment of terror and waiting and <laughs> figure out what on earth was gonna that happen. was so rude mm. yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not okay I know, but to make us wait. Oh, we are waiting. Yeah, that's. Uh, I was hard. like, no. I was gonna use that scroll of resurrection. On I'm me. sure you were. Bet your ass. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I um. <clears throat> I don't know, Floyd. Um, he's got a whole. Maybe that'll get explored in one of the one shots. <laughs> Floyd's story. Maybe they'll love... get to send him back to 1920s New York, where he's from. Yeah, this Who is knows? This making me wish I'd met Floyd because I didn't, or else maybe my answer would be different. Yeah, he I was don't... in the backyard of the Primpton. I don't think I ever actually spoke. <laughs> Leo think? never spoke to Floyd, but I'd yes. heard so many stories of Floyd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Floyd is a yeah. He's a he's a PI from 1920s New York. If we do it, I had so much fun role playing our characters, like talking to normal Ted and like normal Ted who knew everything <laughs> oh about my modern. God. I would love one where like planes are crossing with 1920s New York and we have to react to that. That would be fun. Cool. I can make that. I can make that. <laughs> well, with the Eberron book coming out, that's a very pulpy stuff. So there's things I could probably spin with that. Um. I like Super... I got. Oh yeah. my god, he's a crusty old man. The fashion that Odella could wear. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot. Wendy's. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> man, all that right. flapper style. And we'll see. Right. We could just keep adding one shots, so we'll see. Um, oh, favorite reliquary result. Obviously, not including Muffin, because obviously that's the favorite. Yeah. I mean, what um, else did we even have? I can't remember. That's all I think. So, uh, Leo speaking of Pig Latin. That was great. That was fucking amazing. That was amazing. Least favorite. Uh, Least favorite. That was terrible. I mean, I'm partial to interacting with me. (laughs) That was really fun. I think that that was was a good one. And helpful. I really want to get that in another one of the campaigns that I'm a player in. (laughs) Because I feel like the evil game characters would have a lot of really great questions for Jake. (laughs) Since he's the DM. And I'd be like... 
you gotta answer some things right now. <laughs> Let's see what else we've had. We've had Towley show up. Towley, my yeah. least favorite. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what is <laughs> happening? Um, have we? There was one where we got like. Oh, wait, no, that that wasn't a reliquary thing. I think that was something that happened in the cave. I guess it hasn't really like action surge for some reason. I can't remember if that was reliquary. No, that was a reliquary. Yeah, everybody gets action surge for. That's rad. Nice, but actually, that was the first one that tipped, and that was a good one. Everybody just got action yeah. surge in the next combat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we really haven't had it that many times. You had a lot of weird ones, so I'm gonna look that up in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So oh, super juicy oh, plot. Oh, uh, wasn't yeah. wasn't um. Oh wait, what about trinkets? Oh, we can get there. Let me uh, answer Joe's question real okay. quick, and then yeah. we'll talk about trinkets. Um, super juicy plot thread or hidden thing the party totally missed out or didn't pursue. So I can't dive too much into that because the game's not over. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of the really juicy stuff hasn't happened yet. Um, some of it we've alluded to, like Splinter Holes and the <laughs> Palace of the Red Pasha uh, and what's going on with Odella's patrons. Right. That things will be explored in future episodes. So I can't dive into that. Um, the, the whole fucking cave at the end of the fight where they <laughs> before Tiamat, where there's a, an undead beholder whole situation where they because they they saw they had a dead beholder on the caravan going north and it never paid its due is it was all part of trying to work the beholder's magic into anti-magic stuff and you like that was a whole thing that was going to be in the final room which is not in the book by the way that's all made up but like the caravan sucks so i was like let's put a dead beholder in there that's cool um and the, you know that they didn't really so that's the one thing i can say that they're never going to go back and deal with so that's something um okay you asked favorite trinkets so go ahead uh i'm sorry i'm just looking at laura's comments about how she might be pregnant with a demon baby like excuse me oh we didn't why would it be a demon baby i don't know i have no idea it'd be like a half dragon half devil baby like i'm an, I'm an angel it's not yours uh yeah that's exactly and leo would like take <laughs> He would be that guy who'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to step up and, like, raise this. And it'd be a fucking patron, baby. Oh, my God. It'd be like, you know, when oh. Gabrielle gets pregnant in Xena Warrior Princess with, like, oh, the yeah. demon child, Hope. Oh my Can God. I just say, like, how deep we've gotten off screen about, like, what would happen in the future? Like, Oh, yeah. We've yeah. talked about all our children. Absolutely. Yeah. I literally drew this picture of what their child with, like, Roswin's, mm -hmm. like, child would look like. And she's yep. beautiful. Yep. <laughs> so this is assuming Roswin has kids and then Odella and Leo have kids and then they have a kid. That's how far out this is planned, everybody. <laughs> just think about a lot of it. <laughs> chat. between weekly games our chats uh a lot happens in them yes <laughs> oh, oh yeah i don't think you guys have gotten too many i've seen all these reliquaries that have gone off um um for trinkets though gary uh, great i love gary <laughs> Dragon Balls. I have four. Oh my them. God! You have four Dragon have Balls. Four freaking Dragon Balls, and I don't know. I just uh the the fact that we're leaving it there is just like it's not over. I know, I know, I know, but it's hard for me <laughs> to know that I'm so close and yet so far. So I mean, we got a lot of one shots where you could discern, uh, find other ones. Well, see, a lemur yeah. is going to find you, Renee, I'm, while I'm, you're out in the world, and be like, listen. I need those dragon balls <laughs> for a very specific purpose. There's a man I love. <laughs> Would you want to be resurrected with the dragon balls or no? Yeah, he can yeah, be resurrected. That's... Leo, or, or sorry, Che Che hasn't been, if we're going with earth dragon balls, Che Che has not been resurrected by the dragon balls yet. Okay. So he can be resurrected with Still, them. Uh, yeah, uh, Chad, unless these are uh, Namekian dragon balls, then he can just get resurrected by as many of them as he uh, wants. Spin kick. <laughs> but we're going to say they're the, the earth based ones because they're not like the big dragon balls that are like yeah. this big. They're like, you know. They're like the little yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The earth ones. I, it's just so cool. And uh, I will have to summon Twitter in full force for trinkets when yeah, we go. play just to see if we can get there. Yeah, I mean, oh, trinkets are great. And I've been slowly working on reworking the ones that are crap. Like, Barbarian trinket list is garbage. 
So I've been rebuilding that. With uh, By the way, if you don't know and you haven't joined our Discord, there is a Trinket suggestion channel where you can just go in and suggest trinkets for any uh, class. We even have some cool uh, Artificer ones that were thrown out there um, because they don't have I don't have a list for that. Um, so... I'm like yeah. just pulled up my rolled twenty horde of the dragon queen uh, character sheet <laughs> to look at all my trinkets that I got. Mm -hmm. I first of all, I have a reminder in here to use the butterflies in my staff. To oh, stop my <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Yes! 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 Never use them. You don't want That's them to cool. die. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, they literally have like I have names. They're Mavis, Calliope, and Steve. You have said that before. Yeah. yeah, so for those of you who don't know, part of Roswin's uh, legacy magic item was these butterflies that were attracted to the scent of the jasmine flowers that grow on the staff. And the butterflies are like, they're like big fucking butterflies to the point where they can, uh, if there's an attack that would take Roswin down to zero, they will sap, like fly in front of it and self-sacrifice oh, themselves man. to take if, that if hit. Punchy guy should have punched a butterfly. To yep. be fair, I don't. I'm not entirely sure she would have had her staff there for that one. That's true. But but it would have saved me a lot of struggle in my drunken state. Uh, yeah, the, the the inspiration for that was uh, Fox from the sixth, the fifth Harry Potter book, where that happens in the book. It doesn't happen in the movie. Uh, where Voldemort and Dumbledore are fighting, and like Voldemort throws an Avada Kedavra, and Fox comes in and eats it, and then mm -hmm. comes back because he's a phoenix. That mm -hmm. was the inspiration, although they don't come back; they're just self-sacrificing butterflies. One of um, my trinkets was that I had eaten a watermelon seed, and it was growing. Oh my god, I forgot about that. And uh, then I it happened. Spoke. No big deal. After. <laughs> oh man, shit. I have to think about uh, it. Well, now I know. I'll I, write that down. Roslyn has vine armpit hair. Yeah, that's right. I do remember that one. Um, she doesn't have actual armpit hair. She grows vines. Yeah, and I have the ability to hear the excitement of blooming flowers and the old age tales of trees. Like, this shit is crazy. Um, but I think that my favorite trinket was that scarf that keeps me warm no matter what. Yes. Just because it was fun to, for Roswin to be like, oh, you're here, let me comfort you. Take my scarf, which got yeah. longer every episode in my mind. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, my most useful uh, trinket was obviously the chair. Yeah. That was great. That was great. Um, Gary was pretty cool. Especially but... now. Yeah. <laughs> He's very useful now. Um, and... I, but I have to say, one of the first trinkets I got, because it, it fit in well with my original, like, diva situation that I had by being an Azimar, I, I enjoyed the chocolate coins I that Volantis threw when I got a crit because he was so patronizing. He was, like, still treating me like a child after all those years. He's like, good job! Here's some chocolate coins. <laughs> I remember the first time that happened, and I was like, what the shit? Because I had never heard it, and Ted was just describing He's like, all of a sudden, chocolate coins, and I'm like, what's happening? What? what? I'm, like, really alarmed. Crossman's <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh, that was the best. That's the proof that your new patron is a pile of shit and Valandris was the best. She what? hasn't crit on a single attack since she got the new patron. <laughs> so Oh my god, me. what do what do I get? Do I get something different? <laughs> Needles. We'll, we'll find out. Mm, I've I, I have thought about it and I have stuff written down. Little they're, bottles of wine or something. They're a Halloween candy with razors in them, like <laughs> your mom always had to check for. <laughs> wow. No, it probably would be... Well, you know what? We'll find out. If it comes up, it comes up. Something but, classy. But I have thought about it. Campaign troubles. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, I think we've kind of uh, died down, I believe, a little bit on the questions. Um, so if anybody has... <laughs> Black licorice. <Gross. laughs> Black um, jelly beans. <laughs> You know what, this is one that uh, came up recently in somewhere uh, that I was looking through on the internet. If you could have you, the person, the player, any one magic item from all of Dungeons & Dragons in real life, which one would you want? 
And I'm um, also going to say you can't say Ring of Three Wishes because that's stupid. That is stupid. Because like everybody says wishes. that. Um, or like the Luck Blade with a wish. Like no wish spells. All If you want the deck of many things and you want that kind of power, that's an option. But you mm. know what you did if that's the case. <laughs> I'm not strong enough for that shit. Yeah, you have it. You know what it does. Like, hey, pick a card. Um... The Hat of Disguise would be pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Um, you know what? I really want just that um, my the armor that Odella has, so I don't have to like buy clothes. It oh, just changes the like, glamoured nice. glamoured armor. Yeah, I would have the Rod of Resurrection. <sighs> That's too much power. Because I'm mom, <laughs> and I I have to take care of my my people. I would use it selfishly, absolutely. It wouldn't be like a, oh no, who do I use it on? I'd be like, my loved ones. <laughs> Damn, that's hard. That's so I know. hard. I'm so stressed by this question just because like there are so many options and I yeah. honestly haven't thought about this before. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like stuff I would be able to use in my life too. Cause I have, this is sort of like that, like what magic power would you get question? Cause I have no interest in like flying or any of that shit. Like, yeah, I don't either. I'm, I would be terrified to fly or else I would totally take my boots of flying. Yeah. So it'd be something social, like a, a ring of like, well, there's not a ring of mind reading. There's one mind shielding. There's a, yeah. I think there's, um, there's the helm. There's yeah. the helm of mind Helm reading. of telepathy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, everywhere this might be the helmet. You just walk so around. Really. Party. No, so it'd have to be something subtle, like a ring or something somebody couldn't see or like a jewelry piece because I'd want to be able to maximize it for use in my day-to-day -day life. You know, or, what, oh, what's that charisma thing that like boosts the shit out of your charisma and makes everybody want to do things for you? Or is that just a feat? Uh, there was a there was an item that was like a legendary or an artifact in three five. Yeah, I can't that. remember. It was what, the one where people like, could go blind by looking at you. Was it that one? Because no, that was one. No, I can't. I know. I'm like you a know hard the one time. I'm talking about though. <laughs> I do. I have a hard time remembering what's five e and what's three five. That's um, fine. Whatever. Pick a magic item. I said of all Dungeons and Dragons, so go go to town. Oh my god. Yeah, probably probably like a. Oh man, I don't know. What were you gonna say, Laura? I was gonna say. I was like, oh man, the all the figurines that you oh. can throw out and like have little animal companions. That'd be great. That'd be fun times. So the dog talks to you and I love it. <laughs> one of the most common ones that comes up a lot, I feel like, is uh just bag of holding. How useful is a bag of holding in your everyday life? Not useful. Mm -hmm. No, so divorced parents going between houses, if I had a bag of holding, oh my God, my life would have been so much easier. Think about <laughs> how you could put your entire house or apartment. Like, Can you fly with bags of holding? Yeah, they only, uh, they only, I mean, you mean like in an airplane? Yeah, yes. I don't know if that gets searched on TSA to know to like dump it out. On Not the surface, it just looks like a bag. Yeah, what would an x-ray like? <laughs> I know, that's what I'm curious about. Like, I'm not sure mm. if I could get... Because because if if I could get it through TSA, I could see that a lot of practicality from it, especially like traveling to conventions and stuff and like basically taking my whole outfit and some cosplays and also bringing back a ton of games. But like... I'm going to say the yes. Found out they would... I'm going to say flagged it, yeah. I'm going like to say that it's fine because it looks just like a bag and I feel like x-rays don't work on extra dimensional spaces. I would feel safer like with a portable a hole because no one's going to look at like a folded up handkerchief. Handkerchief, yeah. 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 Plus yeah. it's bigger. It is, but like when you go to open it, it's a lot more conspicuous because it's just a big ass yeah. hole in the ground. Whereas like you're like a bag of holding, you're like, man... I really wish I had brought the. Oh my god, I did! Look here it is. <laughs> Mary Poppins ask. I mean, I like think about candy. think about it's Katie fun. at this freaking at this convention. Be like, man, I really wish we brought a coffee pot. Oh wait, coffee pot. I wish we had another air mattress. Which size would you like? Blah, 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 blah. Like I basically did that anyway. I know, but you could have done it all in one bag, <laughs> and it would have been that much more impressive. <laughs> I would honestly, though, choose the headband of intellect because I feel like getting myself a 19 intelligence 
like just being basically the epitome of however smart you could possibly be all the time really just opens so many other doors because things are just going to start to click now like oh i should do this instead but like when you remove it is like a flowers for algernon situation i'm never going to remove it i'm never going to unattune from it let me rephrase that okay i would attune to it but i would never unattune from it yeah, see, I get something like that where it's like a yeah, a subtle like so like a read a like I don't know the book of exalted deeds or like something. oh yeah like, you gotta go that hot yeah sure uh, why not why we can pick anything we I want. did say um, anything yeah I just really hate shopping <laughs> yeah that I would give me a, a permanent stat boost or like a bo- <laughs> the manual of bodily health or something <laughs> that I'm like well I'm better forever like. <laughs> And if instead of armor, it could be a muumu, that would be great. Like a muumu of <laughs> whatever. What pants of? Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, Joe asks if you could play another module with this party, what would you pick? Oh, curse the Strahd. Uh, I, I want to oh. see Leo lose his fucking shit and Odella thrive. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Why that would be so anti Leo. <laughs> Hmm. Tomb of Annihilation. Wow, that'd be awful. It would be. It's just <laughs> awful in general. I think the other one. So let's see. Huh? I, yeah, I've never played. Uh, I mean, Out of the Abyss would be cool. Ooh, that would be cool. I think I don't know it yet, but I really, I'm so excited for Avernus and yeah. uh, like, this party. <gasps> Oh yeah, with like, with really Odella and like through Avernus, yeah. Can you That'd imagine us building our hell machine like thing together? Oh, like, <laughs> war machine, yeah. More gold, yeah. More gold. craft. <laughs> Look at our infernal war machine covered in flowers. <laughs> no, we won't stand out one bit. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Gary on the front. I red uh, paints like the the engines with rainbows. I. Yeah. Still, super want to see how well we would do in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Oh, uh, see, see, here's my thing. I like Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but I don't think it translates. I mean, obviously, it, whether it's streamed or not, I just don't think it translates. A dungeon crawl that's just a dungeon crawl for everyone, even though Dungeon of the Mad Mage is starkly different each level, I just feel like it would be boring to watch. Like, here they are in the dungeon again. This time they're outside, but it's still a dungeon. Oh, I love that shit. I would hate I that. Dungeon. I would hate. Uh, that. I mean, you and I, <laughs> Celeste, you and I could play yeah. Dungeon of the Mad Mage together, and with a different DM, and I think we'd be yeah. great. Oh yeah. But a lot of people don't like that. Well, bunker down, folks. We're in this level till we get out. Hell yeah! I know. I need like, to be like, I don't like this. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. I think it might be really cool if you use like like the roll 20 tools or something like you go hams with like the, the maps red and like really like somebody who's really good at it and dungeon fog and like cool tokens yeah, yeah. and stuff i think that'd be a very good way to do it but other than that i get your point though i had a great deal of fun running you all through that one level no i had a black listen i'm <laughs> fine with it i like dungeon crawls i like playing D and i like i love Role-playing in Dungeons & Dragons, but I'll be honest with you, or I think I can say this with relative ease, I have had very few Dungeon Masters in the time that I've been playing D&D that have valued role-play. And I mean, I started in a campaign when I first started playing that wasn't in that aspect, and that's fine. I didn't know that's a thing that I kind of wanted, but every campaign that I've been in since where like they've touted role-play as a thing, my character was just not like it didn't matter at all this great story didn't actually matter um so the parts that i enjoy the most because it's something that's visceral and real and i can understand it is tactical combat like i can build a character that can go ham in a certain aspect in a fight and i can build myself tactically around how i'm gonna make that happen and that's what i can do and have it work because I feel like every campaign is going to have some degree of combat, but in my personal experience, not many have role playing where I can dive deep into my character's backstory and have the kind of emotional conversations that you all have had in this campaign. Because no one gives me that opportunity. Um, 
Well, thank you, Ted, for Aww. giving us that opportunity. I, like I was saying, like I, I, yeah, I feel like I give that opportunity a lot to my players, and it's so nice to actually like have gotten that back for this game. Well, also, hi, Greg. Uh, but switch the K and the T in Celeste's thing. Storm King's Thunder, not STK. Storm. Which is what, which is what Celeste Damn it. <laughs> Storm Thunder King. Katie you know knew him. what I meant. Yes. Everyone. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's a good time, Storm King's Thunder. I kind of played through it once and I ran some of it. Um, you know, it's it's a different campaign. Um, it's less linear in a lot of respects, I'd say. It has a lot more like sandboxy stuff you can deal with um but yeah I, I think you guys going through i see i know you guys don't like dungeon crawls or at least not all of you do so tomb of annihilation loses some of the intrigue behind it but like you know being able to travel through the undead ridden jungles of chult um dealing with like a, oh shit we forgot to buy bug repellent guess we're gonna get diseases Oregon Trail style, like that's a thing that can happen. That's a little different. What I liked about this one and, and the little that I know about Curse of Strahd is that like in these formats, like there's there's places that you can go that are like habited, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one. But like I feel like in a lot of a lot of the modules, like it would be like with our group, a bunch of siblings stuck in a car on a road trip together. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair <laughs> i can see it mm. <laughs> so maybe with a different party like i could get more into it but with this one i can't i can't even imagine playing actually if if uh if water deep was for higher level characters um that would be so much fun for all of us um like that level one through five going on and like you make a tavern over the course of the game and like the intrigue like of all the politics and the factions in yeah. water that would be super fun technically we have to navigate that to build the primp and pie in water deep <laughs> so like yeah, yeah. Just so let's scale that up. Let's scale or, that bad boy up. Or, yeah, Ted, can you? <laughs> or, I mean, I can. I could Just absolutely do the that. the whole damn thing. Well, here's what you could do, <laughs> right? Uh, you guys, the Belladonna's heroes of the Sword Coast, uh, are establishing a new uh, establishment in Waterdeep. But they're so busy dealing with all of their other trauma and drama, they hire a new group of people to run it. <laughs> so oh you guys god, would play god. as the level one oh my god, people wait, oh my god oh my god in that game who would you all play what are the characters the people who are hired by the belladonna yeah the belladonna's hire a group of people do we to... hire a person sure yeah <laughs> oh my god oh my god oh my god I'm, we're doing I'm, level one through five I'm, I'm the levels one through five <laughs> wait wait can we each hire a person and then like we all like pick out of a hat like which Ooh. person? Which one? We, oh. oh my god! So okay. We just, like pick another like character for somebody else. Like technically, that somebody else will play. Okay. Yeah, that could be interesting. That's an interesting mechanic. And yeah. we, they, we all have to write like a, a particular secret that they each have. Like, yeah, that's not yeah. so great. Okay, oh. yeah, but that's it's that's how I would do that. Is the Belladonnas <laughs> are off doing something? Hey, we're gonna establish this. We each vetted somebody out in an interview process um here's the resources and here's the scenario get it up and running and then it's yours to manage as a franchise go <laughs> you could also do the same thing I with acquisitions it. incorporated the same kind of scenario but with the print pie instead of ac ink but mm. i would do like like a gnomish maybe gnomish maybe human like whatever someone with a lot of money who's come to water deep like candle keep to study to be like a wizard um but they just have like just totally ostracized their parents and their parents have cut them off to teach them a lesson so now they have to like get a job and then also <laughs> do school and like try to learn how to be a wizard and survive on their own oh cool so in real life that's time. fun <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> the the water deep uh homebrew implosion was only a f like few days ago in canon um because of how much time passed it was like a week or a so. lot. <laughs> yeah honestly uh so i would love to bring back my uh 24 hour stream character the eladrin 
uh, latte, latte girl. Um, because I feel like I feel like it'd be really fun to play or see her played more long term if we did like a, a hat drawing situation. But like, I really enjoyed doing that for the stream and the primp and pie. Like, okay, once once homebrew basically imploded, she's probably job searching right now. So. <laughs> I feel like Odella would hire her for sure. <laughs> that was the first. Oh my gosh. Wait, maybe Leo would send Cosmo to like go and be so Cosmo, our bear bartender who invented the Cosmo. Uh, so super cute elven boy. Um, just like total twink, like trying to like, <laughs> what, what class would he be? Would he be like a rogue? Oh my God. Artificer? Would he be a drink artificer? Yeah, maybe like yeah, <laughs> the potions it. artificer. Yeah. Oh my god, Cosmos! So good. <laughs> so good. Mixology. Yes. I mean. Yeah. Yes. It's <laughs> always an before. option. Or you don't make your own character. That would be really interesting to do. Yeah, it would be fun to pick play a character that somebody else had like built for mm -hmm. you. Because I, I think it would be better than rather than just us randomly picking, like if we picked out names and then we built a character for that person, like that we think that they should play type person, thing like that. I think that would be fun. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. Just what if you randomly had a character created for you? Yeah. Hell yeah. That could be fun. I, I, I mean, this is all like a theoretical scenario to get water deep to happen, but like this is really a lot of things are falling in place. I know we're all busy. I like it. I like the sound of it. I know we're all busy and we all have commitments and everybody wants to take a break and that's what's going to happen. Although content will still exist on the channel on Mondays in some format. I feel like there's a future campaign that just happened. <laughs> We uh, may have done it. <laughs> um, that laugh sounded way more wicked than I meant it to, but like. <laughs> uh, and the only thing I would do is, uh, you know, I've talked about this a little bit. Uh, right, Waterdeep is only levels one to five and it's relatively short. So we would just sort of structure it around a, call it a 16 episode season and we'd play through that whole thing and kind of lock it down. Uh, as best we could. I know how you guys are, though, so who knows how that would go. But try to keep it a little more concise and try to get the whole storyline done. But then, like, we could have... These are other characters that exist in the world of the Belladonnas. And, like, three months from then, the next Belladonna's one-shot, and you guys heard something from your Waterdeep franchise. They're telling you, like, hey, you gotta come back here. Shit's going down. And oh, that God, sparks the fire. And then that sparks oh, the next one-shot. there to hold it down. You've done this before. How come you can't manage it in Waterdeep? <laughs> and then that's what sparks the next iteration of the campaign. Or the next one-shot. That's how it all starts. It's just <laughs> them, and then all of a sudden way more crazy stuff yeah these drow showed up and they're like talking about how they're looking for some lion guy and we figured it was leo <laughs> my life is just coming up drow recently so i don't know <laughs> i don't know man Thay and wizard showed up and they're like hey there's this chick odella she seemed to really dig our vibes like uh, she still want to come out she still want to come out and like hang out in Thay because we're totally down for that Hey, did you guys get those thumbs we left you? Yeah, did you guys get those finger bones we put in your bags <laughs> as a parting gift? That was so nice of them, guys. Like, they're <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Leo gets bit by a were lion, obviously. <laughs> were lion, half dragon, raised by I dwarves. I don't know how I would feel about that because I feel like it would make sex harder. Uh. We're not going to give you like a cat barbed penis like scenario. There. We're not going to give you that. Um, I imagine just like like the the male version, like so Leo and like Leo and like Catra and mix them together, and that's what uh, you get. Cool, cool. I dig it. That's what I say. Mm. At least oh hybrid form. Don't Into even it. talk to she about she read of me right now. I can't deal. With that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Can you guys see Kevin Smith's remake in He-Man? No. 
Yeah, like they're... live action? No, the Netflix series that's supposed to continue where the 1980s cartoon left off. But, which is weird because there's the 2002 reboot, which was way better. And <laughs> also, Shira he and Shared Universe, I don't know if they're going to be. Which seems like a wasted choice if you're yeah, gonna that do, seems like a bad decision if you're gonna do he-man now like and you already have she-ra you like you just put he-man on she-ra's planet right now so that he's with a bunch of princesses <laughs> well i mean they like there's a lot of illusion to what a hordak had going on oh, i feel yeah. like we're talking about eternia like mm-hmm. couldn't get there in time what's going on you know i i, I don't know uh, but anyway, uh, I feel like we're pretty much, we're a little past time here. The crown's back out. Um, so I think, I, like, did you guys, let me ask you, because I didn't ask you guys, do you guys have any questions for me that I may or may not be able to answer? I'm going to leave that for when it officially ends. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. That's fair. We have so much for of us. <laughs> I mean, like old ladies, just like all oh. cast moonbeam, oh. lightning bolt, <laughs> uh, dream. That's the dream, Katie. <laughs> Girl, I'm gonna be playing Dungeons and Dragons. I'm gonna have to have someone oh, else yeah. roll my dice for me because I'm gonna be like, eh, my arm. Yeah, I can't <laughs> see it. You, <laughs> you, you, you kids, <laughs> you kids in your tenth edition, get out of here. We're still playing fifth. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> oh god uh, all right well i mean i'm fine with it i i'm i'm just feeling i'm just sitting here feeling yeah. <laughs> i, I mean, won't feel, i i'm not feeling as much as i would if this were the end end but like still feeling yeah i mean it is the end of a continual weekly part of our lives that we sit down and, and chat with each other for two to three hours every week uh, listen, you say level 30 epic characters, I've got stuff for epic level campaigns, and these one-shots aren't going to be contained at level 16. There will be level-ups throughout these, so you guys may hit 20. Just I really to... want to. As long as I hit 18, I'll feel okay. But I, I mean, I was... had certain things planned to level you up, and then we just added in more one-shots, so... That would be the highest I would have ever leveled up in D&D. Well, we'll see. I hit 18, Roswin lives forever, unless something straight up kills her. <laughs> yep i know that was always the plan so um so anyway uh we'll go around the horn and say who we are and all that good stuff so we'll start with you celeste hello everybody my name is celeste conowich oh my god i hope you've learned it by now but in case you <laughs> haven't um i run another show here on this channel it's called mistress of modules uh we just had an awesome part one uh game yesterday and we're going to be back on september 1st with part two of masquerade de loaf uh which was a ton of fun uh all the characters are literally at a masquerade in menzo baronzon at loaf's house barely surviving uh so we'll see what happens there so check that out um follow us at mistress of mods on twitter uh and then of course you can check out all my other stuff i do on the internet uh the best place to find all of it is to go to celesteconowich.com there you can see all the books i'm writing the projects i'm working on the podcasts i do uh including venture maidens which is an actual play all woman and non-binary podcast um or dmnastics which is my other podcast i'm on so yeah but follow me on Twitter at C Conowich, and I'll tell you how much I love you and games and this channel. <laughs> All right, Katie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie. Uh, you can find me this Wednesday and every other Wednesday on Celeste's Venture Maidens, where I play another tiefling. This one's a spicy sorcerer, though. Um, I also have an Etsy store. Um, where I'm working my way through doing kind of some particular uh, D&D deities, um, but also kind of like grouping some together that are very similar. Um, and also I just added Venture Maiden soaps that are themed off of each of the maidens to my store. Um, there's a, a link there for you guys. You can have that. Um, Thank you. you can, <laughs> yep. Uh, and you can find me on my website, lazymermaiden.com, uh, which has my D and D schedule on there, and then also on Twitter at uh, lazy underscore mermaiden as well, uh, where you can keep up with all that. Plus, me being dumb on the internet, which happens. 
Uh, I also want to just a quick shout out for those of you who don't know. Uh, I've never run a campaign in my life where I feel like my players have enjoyed it so much. Uh, so I really, and I'll talk more about this at the end. But I've also never ran a campaign where things that happened in it led to someone to get art of it permanently on their body. And look at that right there. That sweet dragon skull Belladonna's logo. That's a that's a thing that happened because of a story that I told with friends. Like that's bananas. I got I got my song dragon in the wings, so I mean, that's so <sighs> What a world. Anyway, uh Laura, how's it going? How are you? Uh, it's, it's going great. Um yeah, my name's Laura. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Win in Rome. Um so this isn't happening anymore, but you can find me on Scratchkiss channel on Wednesday playing Ooh. some week with Renee. Yeah. I'm excited to learn how to play it because I've actually had the app for a long time, but I'm like, I need someone to like show me what to do. So I'm very excited to learn. Um, so you can check that out. I'm sure Renee will tell you more about it. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can also check out my Twitter. Um, I have some stuff in like the back burner. Don't know exactly when yet, but um, if you want to keep up with that, just check it out there. All right. And Renee? Hi, I'm Renee Rhodes. You can find me on Twitter and all of the things I do at RayDNR. You can also find more at my website, like how to support me, what projects I'm involved in, with at RayDN.com. And I do have a lot of podcasts and streams. First podcast is Fate and the Fable Maidens, which is family friendly DD actual play. And then also, uh, pre-production is going on for an audio drama I'm working on called Eden Fall, and I'm super looking forward to that one. Uh, pieces are starting to come together, scripts are starting to come together, and it's a really exciting uh, process. I'm also on streams. Uh, obviously, this one, I just, I'm not even going to really know what to do, but like, I will be in another stream. This is how I was I was coping uh, <laughs> on Monday nights. It's a little bit later. It doesn't start until uh, 7.30 piece Pacific time. So I think it's like 10.30 Eastern. Um, mm -hmm. So it is a little bit later than this one was, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'll post more about that because as far as I know, it's a secret right now that I'm a part of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm also part of a viewer game on Wednesdays, and a viewer game is essentially inviting players to come and learn a game, stream for the first time, uh, whatever, just give them an opportunity to hop on camera and play a game. I am running Weave, which is one of my favorite games, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. It's called The Tapestry, and we have a recurring cast of two players and two new players every week. So if you're interested, you're welcome to shoot Scraticus a message, uh, uh, Twitter Scraticus underscore, and uh, he might mark you down, be able to get you in a game, and uh, you could try out some streaming and some weave, and I'd love to have you. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and if you're looking for some more uh, bite-sized, 10 minutes or less kind of explanation about what Weave is, there's an interview on our YouTube channel where I interviewed Renee Gen Con, and I was like, I don't know about Weave. Tell me about it. And we did it in 10 minutes or less. So if you want like a primer, that video exists. You can go find that, and I'll give you a quick rundown on what Weave is and some links and where to find more information. Um, so I'm Ted. This is my channel. This is Nerd Immersion. Uh, I run a game, well, typically run a game every Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow night is going to just, there's only two of us or two of the players around. So we're going to do something. I don't know what we might just stream us painting minis. Who knows? We'll figure something out. <laughs> um, uh, but that'll be that Wednesday. I'm building Yusuke Yurameshi from the anime Yu Yu Hakusho, which I'm very excited about. Cause that's an anime I haven't thought about in 10 years. Um, and then next week there will be no channel goes dark until Sunday when Celeste will run part two. Uh, not this coming Sunday, the 25th, the following Sunday, which is the first. So that's we'll be running part two of that. But all next week is going dark because new baby. So that'll be that scenario. I'll be dealing with fatherhood for a second time around. So no streams on the channel, but I will be back on Monday night, maybe. I don't know what's happening on the second because I don't know yet because this isn't here. The staple of my life for three years is oh. not a thing anymore. Oh. Um, so I'll be here doing something. Um, 
I did say, uh, I'll we'll just put a link to it. There's no custom URL yet because we don't have enough followers on the YouTube channel for Nerd Immersion Play. So that's the URL. Memorize that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's where we're going to be uploading basically episodes 28 and on of Rise of Tiamat. I'm just going back to get, um, to do recaps to cover or reusing Celeste's existing recaps to cover what happened thus far to get you up to speed before you jump to a new channel to see the gameplay going forward. Um, also, when we hit 3,000 here on Twitch, uh, Celine's going to run a game. Uh, first time ever running a game on stream. I think third time ever running a game, period. Uh, she's going to run a game for the rest of us on Tuesday, so that'll be fun. And September is Evil Month. Evil game all month long. Total break from my campaign as Jake's doing me a favor since I'm dealing with the whole being a dad again with an infant. I don't really have as much time to prep games, uh, so Jake's going to run a game all month long. So I just get to sit down and play. That should be fun. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Descent to Avernus may be appearing on the channel in some form. Details are still in the wind on that. Um, but mark your calendars again. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, October 19th. Belladonna's first one-shot is happening. I think it's going to be the search for Valandris will probably be what it is. Um, we'll figure out what happens with Vettin and Valandris and Odella's whole patron, because that's sort of where we ended. Um, and we'll see what happens. And then three months out from that, we'll schedule another one, and we'll figure out what happens in the Palace of the Red Pasha, and we'll move down the list. At some point, we'll have the Pets episode, where everybody gets to play a pet. I great. can't fucking wait for that. I one. cannot wait. That's been like three years in the making. That is three years in the making, yeah. <laughs> I remember being in your house in your basement harassing you. Yeah, physically <laughs> harassing me. Uh, when so are like, we going to do this? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, we'll do it. We're on stream. Stop it. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but yes, so guys, uh, keep your arms out and your hearts open. <laughs> uh thank you yeah yeah thank you all so much for being a part of this crazy journey over the past three years uh it has forged these friendships even further than i ever thought possible with people playing on the internet but it just goes to show you what dungeons and dragons can do for friendships for people for connecting with you guys there on the internet in the chat how much fun we can have watching characters grow falter stumble come together get a puppy and save the world and if that's not dungeons and dragons i don't know what is so thank you all so much for watching we'll see you on the 19th of october